And they're off. Ooh, that one got distance. Yeah. Chrome, <laughs> money <laughs> shot. Chrome is wearing that one. Um, same uh, Mouseketeer roll call as usual. Chrome, you've been riding anything this week or just customer bikes? Customer bikes. Was it you out there throttling the Shadow 750? No, it was Luke. That was Luke. Holy crap. Yeah. That bike was... You scared some... You guys exercised some serious <laughs> fucking demons out of that bike, man. Because every... It started out with like... <laughs> Had that bike sat for a long time? What was the deal with that thing? Yes. I don't know how long, but yeah, it sat for a while. It was a Shadow 750, wasn't it's, it? Yeah. Uh, no, 1100. Oh, that was an 1100. That's an 1100. It Shadow sounded 100. like a 350 when it, it started. It sat for a long time, and <laughs> it supposedly ran fine before sitting, and then somebody decided to clean the carburetors, and that's the one that I found. Oh, my God. Two, two diaphragms off location, and <laughs> the little wires on the float needles were on the wrong side of the float. Is this the and boy? Not the boyfriend. The friend of our truck driver buddy. I don't know because he said that there's been a his friend had a what? Shadow 1100 in here that had, was having no share of carburetor goodness. Could be, could be. I don't know. So the but, uh, we, the float needles, those little wire cages yep. mm -hmm. that capture the metal tab on the float, were literally it, yeah. under where they were supposed to be. Correct. <laughs> There's the, the little wire cage is supposed to go around the yeah. tab on the float needle, so yeah. it pulls it up and down. Pulls it up and down. And they were they were on the wrong so side. So it was permapress. So we got that got that all set up, and it still wasn't quite right. So James called the guy up and uh, says, "Well, you know, it did run good before, but we got some kits for it, and some of the numbers on some of the little pieces were different." Okay. So we, I was putting it back to what the uh, the uh, right. schematic says. Sure. So he was looking at like an exploded view. Mm -hmm. So it had stock main jets in it, but it mm -hmm. had modified needles in it, and it had half kits in it. Yeah. So he Not couldn't uncommon. find all the old parts, so oh. we just ordered an actual mm -hmm. kit, and Luke put the kit in today, and it just, uh, I think it just needs to be reminded that it's, uh, you know, a yeah. two-cylinder motorcycle, and... Wow. Yeah, that, it got, it got fucking flogged today. Oh. <laughs> At some point, I heard the motor wake up at least maybe it found another valve <laughs> <laughs> the sound dram changed dramatically and you know yeah. we have it started a lot hitting on that third cylinder yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to be said for a good italian tune-up you know and who's, moving fluids around who's to say that that was there wasn't maybe a valve hanging up or something yeah. stupid because mm -hmm. yeah. i initially got it run and it was run on two cylinders right. for about 10 minutes and then it dropped Ooh. on Ooh, really and then it wouldn't run right and yeah. we started talking to the guy and the story I just told, yeah. and uh, same thing for Luke today. He got it initially on the lift, and it's it's all happy sound and at idle, yeah. hit, 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 you know, hitting on yeah. two. And as soon as it started to warm up, and he tried to ride down the hallway, right. one left the party. <laughs> and he took it out for a ride and came back. It was just well, you heard the yeah, you heard it. it was in yeah. parade mode. Do you have the eco switch off? Because yeah. it, it was kicking one down. Right? Get you. Do those the carburetors the have B overflows on them? <laughs> the B twin they tech have overflows on them. Right. So, like, if the a fuel dump. level goes no, to, they, they don't have a dump. They're no. probably they don't oh, have a dump. so no. when the carbs They're are EPA overflowing, cars, so they don't. it'll. Yeah. It'll they just go right into the motor. It eventually and puts it into the air box. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you see what I'm saying? First. Maybe you still have one that yeah. needs a little float adjustment. Oh, there was a change that happened. <laughs> and my customer was in here. I was talking to these folks, and we heard this. And then all of a sudden, it went into beast mode. <laughs> and the bike was just like, okay, I've had enough. I'm ready to go home now. You people have stabbed me with enough screwdrivers. I'm feeling much better. <laughs> The AIDS is cured. Okay, I give up. I give up. I'll run right. I'll run right. I'll run right. <laughs> Turns out it's be better to be a fucking motorcycle than a victim. <laughs> so much better. That thing sounded so much better. Yeah, there was some magic that happened at some point because even the customers were like, "Oh, that sounded." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like somebody had run all the diesel out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody finally cleared the diesel. Are you talking about the two customers that were in here the last? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, what you forgot to mention is that they were Ward and June Cleaver. Yes. So like, were. if they noticed a difference in the motor, yeah. it was significant. They were straight from the app club. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's something we hadn't ruled out too. Is that that there could have been some moisture, what was not petroleum-based yeah. mm. combustible uh, material, 
<laughs> floating around in the system. Yeah. I mean, I had the fuel filter off twice, cleaned it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, time is no it's, friend, man. And you got a carbureted motorcycle, time is no friend. And, you know, Especially oh. with ethanol gas. Yeah, you know. And so did you get to, have you ridden anything for fun this week? No. Just, just shop bikes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just your morning one hand, morning one arm workout routine. He's yeah. twisted a throttle. Right. <laughs> I, did, I did some fun test riding a couple different things this week, but I mean. Yeah, we got to get more interesting bikes for you to work on. Uh, <laughs> so, can have more fun test riding. Yeah. What have you been riding? You been riding anything this week, Oscar? Yeah, I've been riding the uh, CT110. So I got the, the kit for the carb on the AMA. Yeah, you did. I rebuilt the carb the one day and then just chilled. And then the next day I adjusted the valves the mm -hmm. other day. Got the new spark plug. It's chooching nicely. Really? The <laughs> only thing that's missing, and I just found out, is that the... Remember that the... the the jet that was pressed, that's pressed yes. in, yep. the, the slow jet, yeah. is the only thing that's still not proper, so I need to kind of clean it up again, because okay. it's right. just, as soon as you get off the, the idle, it just kind of stalls a little uh, bit, but when after that, it's just, sorry. So the idle all jet in. is fine, but the, the slow running fine. jet the is slow, the, yeah. the slow jet is the one that's kind of okay. getting okay. problems, but right. everything, any, the everything after that well, is I was going to say, did we, did we try playing around a little bit with the air screw? The air screw. You know, turn, did turn it all the way in until it runs bad. Turn right. it all the way out until it runs yeah. bad. And then go halfway. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I, I did all that stuff, but it's still just... Yeah. just uh, yeah. As soon as you get off the roll, it's just kind of... It just gets a little bit of fart. Just part. a little yeah. bit, and then it just keeps yeah. going. And it comes in. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. So... You've been riding it. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. And I just got into springs for the front fork. Oh, you side. did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Dude, I just got Damn, into today, so... Well, this makeover. weekend I'm gonna. That is gonna be the sweetest CD 110 in America. So my buddy sent me the most painful email or text message that I could have ever received. Uh -huh. It was a picture of a beautiful CT90, probably, it was a 90, it was probably like the last run of 90s, because mm. it was the much, like red, but it was like the more like, eight, yeah, I don't, don't know work. what the last 90 that they made. 1979, Something like yeah. it was, a, it had to be a 79, 80. Yeah. With it, the words, free. Guy, <laughs> guy's giving it away. What? Where? Where? I'll take it. All I right. can come out to New Jersey in yes. like two weeks. I'll go. Get, 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 get. Yeah. Nothing, 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 nothing. Then text yeah. message back. Gone. Yeah. Oh, guy says somebody came and took it. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah, for the record. Meanwhile, me and Kevin are already starting to fight over it. Well, of course you are. <laughs> He's like, well, I can take it. It's, thing. it's, it's gonna not even in somebody's hot little And I'm like, yet. no, I got dibs. I was the first one to say I'd take it. Fuck. Mm. So the, the moral of that is if somebody sees something with free on it, just call. grab it for us and call and somebody I, will be out to get it. Yeah. If you yeah. were anywhere where I could get my hands on him, I would have grabbed him by the shoulder and said, the next time somebody offers you a free bike, take it. Take it. it. <laughs> take it. Yep. I will come out to Jersey just to pick up any kind of bullshit. I'd go to Jersey for a free CT110. I could even fit that in press. Well, this was a 90. <laughs> just lay it down. Yeah. Yeah. You look at the CT, and I think we've hit the dawn, at least at A&I Vintage Days, proven out mm. by the Hempfling brothers. And by vintage days, <laughs> that a CT is anything you want it to be, uh, yeah. up to about 180 cc's now. Yep. Mm -hmm. The CT is just you can fucking start with a CT whatever, mm -hmm. and it ends up with well whatever. You know, <laughs> as much as I like having the dual range transmission. Yeah. Riding your brother's bike, Pete's yeah. brother's bike with a piranha motor in oh, it. Yeah. Uh, oh I yeah. I don't I don't need a low range with that motor. <laughs> <laughs> and he had those wheels rebuilt on that thing too. I mean that is a complete battle scooter now. It's like the um, <laughs> the the wheels that come on those things look like bicycle spokes. I mean he had yeah, a nice yeah. set of wheels built for it and that thing is tight. It really yeah. is. That more that bike had more pluck than like a lot of old two fifty dirt bikes. Oh yeah. 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 A two yeah. XL yeah. two fifty? Like yeah. that thing I don't No know. no. That's not dicking around. And that's the best example of the best cure for a poor running CT110 is Prime. Yeah. The it, 170 or? It's 140. He's got a 140, 140 on his. They go bigger now. Yeah. Like they've gotten to the point where it's almost sublime. I mean, and still hey, fits on the, on the CT frame? Yeah, I've seen Very guys, slight modification. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And hey, nice. if you're a purist, nothing says you have to throw that 110 motor away or anything. No. You can just sit up on a it shelf and rest. Oh, yeah. I gave you the old CT90 motor off mine when I put the Piranha motor on it. And, and I it, it. it made the circle. <laughs> <laughs> it's the circle of the line. Hem, uh, what are you riding? I didn't ride anything recently. Yeah. I have my F800 torn apart because mm -hmm. there's a known Achilles heel on the upper shock mount on that. It has a, a like a cantilevered bolt, Drums. basically, with a rubber bushing. Well, 
There's a very nice machined aluminum bracket you could buy to reinforce that really? upper mount. And so okay. I had it apart and put that in. It was a minor pain in the ass, but I got it done now. Because hmm. if you wait till you bend the shock bolt and, and you bend the frame one, tab, uh, yeah. get it apart. You're done with that. For scheduled yeah. maintenance. What yeah. a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, preventative maintenance. <laughs> oh, oh. Right. Chris Smith oh. locked out. Uh oh, somebody open Chris Smith in. I got it. I got it. Oh. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I had that apart and then put back together, but it's back together now. I was going to get out today, but I just I just didn't uh, I didn't get out today. So, Well, there you have it. And to his left? It's Dustin. What you been riding, man? My DRZ, as DRZ. usual. As Put, usual. Putting the miles on those uh, on that new rubber, man. Yeah. Those yeah. are uh, some confidence-inspiring tires. You're, you're having, you're living the dream. I am. I am, man. It's, you can, I really feel good leaning that thing in the corners. We've I mean, had the weather for it. We have. It's been, it's been perfect. Fantastic. Chris Smith's in the house. Yeah, you can see him. Uh, he's in And to his immediate left is? Ben. Johnny McElfresh. Right, he's been doing any riding that didn't involve United <laughs> Airlines? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I left Saturday after last podcast right. and have been gone. You've been gone for the entire Viva, time that we... Right. Viva Las Vegas. Right. You've been in Vegas since we recorded our last podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That's five more days than I needed. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much uh, money did you lose? I didn't really lose oh. any. I just, I just took a dollar here, dollar yeah. there, play around and yeah. everything. I spent a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Keep those receipts. Yeah. yeah. Keep those receipts. Some of which I can get reimbursed for, a lot of which I cannot <laughs> get reimbursed for. John took uh, silver in the, uh, well, I guess that would be in the National Indoor Airstream Bowling Tournament. <laughs> we uh, we bowled we bowled the shit out of an airstream trailer. That was fun. Yeah, they have an airstream trailer, and there's a two lane bowling alley inside the airstream trailer. That's amazing. Tin, it might have uh, something to do with uh, that. Was after eight dollar bottomless beers. Eight dollar yeah. bottomless beers, and I had to switch to wine because my <laughs> beer distribution system quit working. So I had to switch to red wine because I was like, I just they handed me that beer, and I was like, I can't drink that. There's too much of it. <laughs> so I was like. A beer is that was like a 16 ounce pour. Yeah, they're not running back and forth to your table. No, just hurry up and get them where he needs to be, and then we can. So I said, "Fuck it, give me the wine, bring me the wine." So I had four wines. Was that bottomless too? Yes. Nice. What? Eight Ooh. bucks, bottomless wine. Damn. Bottomless beer, bottomless that was just wine. on top of the sixteen dollar amazing buffet. And it was too. a sixteen dollar buffet with eight dollars worth of bottomless whatever. <laughs> Silverton. Ching. Served by topless women. No. We, no. Once oh. again, yeah, we tried. Uh, don't think we didn't try. Not everything's bottomless. Yeah. And it was a, six, <laughs> and it was a $16 buffet. Hey, where's the bottomless hooker bots? It was exactly, it was exactly the oh, right amount trust of trust me, they're there. Yeah. They're yeah. in yeah. Vegas. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it was... Renee and I crashed his work trip. So, <laughs> he went on a work trip. The city of mm. Cleveland sent him to learn about police communications. And halfway through his trip learning about police communications, Renee and I just went, fuck it, let's go to Vegas. John's got a room. <laughs> so Renee and I shared the, the, the child size bed. <laughs> you know, the Hilton in Vegas used to be a big deal. Elvis Aaron Presley lived for 15 years in the suite, right? The top? The penthouse? Well, they didn't sleep on a crib mattress. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. And John was like, the hotel's not that nice. Things have really gone downhill since the Hiltons don't own it. I was texting Renee. I was telling her it was right. a shitty room, that it was just two full-size beds. You know, that's another reason why I was going to try to maybe switch rooms. And right. Maybe get a bigger bed. Get, a, get up more room. Because yeah. I think I was on the non-renovated floor. But no, no, yeah. It was definitely not. When that place was the Hilton in... Uh, you know, Paris and the Kardashian, or Paris and Kim Kardashian were hanging out there getting into all kinds of trouble. One of the one of our drivers had said that the Hilton family decided that they were going to cleanse themselves of that building <laughs> by selling it. <laughs> and they sold that building. They sold the property. It's a really big property. Uh, well, Huge when you come property. in the one door, you can smell the colonic still. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was not the fanciest property on the strip. The day that we flew in, I Google mapped it. I was just like, well, where the fuck is Westgate? I'm like, I think I kind of remember where the Westgate is. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's the old Hilton. So I Googled it. And, you know, Google Maps, when you pull it, when you name a hotel, it gives you the price of the hotel. And the price of the hotel was $19 a night. <laughs> oh, my God. And you were overpaying? Wow. Advertised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can get a deal if you ask. <laughs> well, apparently, yeah. 
it's a uh, just remember it's vegas that yeah. they'll be like the plus 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 yeah. like, oh no it's plus, plus i checked in Everything supposedly plus, my plus. room was bought and paid for right i'm like well we're gonna be, charge you a 93 dollars. there's resort, resort fees yeah. there's 93 dollar resort yeah. day resort yeah. fee plus 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 right. plus the 250 dollars like they oh, wanted, your, your they $15 wanted... resort fee got you the free Wi-Fi that didn't work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just wasn't a fancy, nice property. And then you get there and you remember, like, so I quit smoking, so now I'm I'm extra sensitive to cigarette smoke because I quit smoking, you know? And so you get to Vegas and, well, oh, God well damn it, they still smoke hard there. That's yeah. every one of them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the worst was Haraz. Where they popped Haraz? Up. Haraz. You mean Haraz? Haraz. 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 <laughs> Haraz sounds more joyful. Yeah. <laughs> but they actually pumped toilet uh, candy misted air oh really so like you you walk in you, you smell like it coming urinal. down the street and you go in and it's like a, a wastewater it's, it's like a wastewater treatment facility when oh you walk my through God. it where's Hoffer when you eat so them? there's yeah. dank smoky <laughs> yeah, Hoffer would have been loving that shit. urinal candy smell <laughs> pumped into the whole, the whole place <laughs> they could at least sound like chocolate chip Renee would have just something. fallen over dead right? yeah, cookie <laughs> dough. Yeah. yeah we went into Frankie's Tiki room and it had a smell you know what's interesting is because the uh, the golden tiki room didn't have a smell. No, I don't. I don't know if they were smoking. I don't think they allow smoking in there. It's a new property, and it's. I'm beautiful. all for non-smoking. I have no problem going outside, smoking, coming back in. Even when it's 116 degrees out. Oh no, it was. I mean, it it's really a dry bad. heat, though. It well, really, literally was. It was a dry heat. It totally, really was. A dry I mean, heat. It, it was oppressive, and it was shocking when you went outside. Yeah. But 106 degrees by the pool kept you in that. You like it, you got out of the pool, you get it back in the pool. We couldn't walk across indoor outdoor carpeting. They had a sign saying. Yeah, yeah. We tried. Surface. We made about 25 feet. We went into a hot tub. It was 106 degrees out. We got in a hot tub. That's weird. But it's remarkably, it still works. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you didn't sweat a drop. You would not get soaked walking down no, the street. No, you didn't sweat a drop, it, but my pee was orange. Yes. I, that's why I'm drinking Gatorade. You were yeah. dehydrated. <laughs> yeah. I dehydrated everything. I didn't sweat. My sinuses cleared out for the first time in 21 years. <laughs> Yeah, I've been peeing tea like brown piss, yeah. and I've been drinking a ton of water. I'm like my kidney. That yeah. probably has something to do with like, I was hitting six or seven beers before noon. I know. Yeah, yeah, and it's impossible. And is he on a training schedule? Yeah, he's a training schedule. It's, it's true. It's, Vegas is daunting. So we know you haven't ridden anything in a week. I was gonna ride uh, the KLR up here, but then yeah. I remembered I had Hello Dolly, so. Yeah. I'm like, back. you know what? I should get that back to him before he knows this is, he doesn't have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, I lose track of shit. But that came with the refrigerator. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. I had to get rid of the refrigerator in January, so there's the dolly. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so, since what you've been riding, dude? Um, uh, all kinds of stuff. My Super T, but... So I had a banking issue at the beginning of uh, last week. Yeah, we remember. Week. We talked about it last week. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that kind of so really... Like all of your bills for the year got paid. Yeah, by accident. At Because of a new system. <laughs> so we literally have had no money. So I pretty much almost ran out of gas on the Super T, so I couldn't ride that to work. So I actually have been buddying it to work. And I had to figure out a because different way. Because you can't way. afford to fill the gas tank <laughs> right, with Super T. Right, right. I got a gallon. The buddy yeah. will give me 130 well, miles. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. I figured out a way to get there to work without going, obviously, on highways and stuff. Get back. Right. So I have to leave 15 minutes earlier. Right. And it's actually been the funnest. I've put so many damn miles on that buddy now. That's hilarious. That, that is becoming my favorite bike of all times. It is so just fun and relaxing and stupid. And, like, all these people are pissed in the morning driving to work, hating 12 life. O'clock, 12 o'clock Sleepy C would not... No, back in the day, I would ever say. Well, no, I always like scooters, but I, I mean, know, like, but, but you're dailying a buddy. Yeah, right. Yeah, but so on the motorcycle, you're you're you're, you're all you know. I, I wear all my gear and everything mm -hmm. like that because I'm going on the highway and everything. Yeah. On the scooter, I wear a helmet, some gloves, and whatever I'm wearing, right. right? And for some reason, that adds like a certain amount of freedom. So like, I'm scooting to work, and you look over at all these pissed off people texting and putting lipstick on and eating their Dunkin' whatever and yeah. all this stuff, and they're just met. And I'm just laughing, scooting away, going to work. It was great. It's I have fun. to admit, so that was awesome. And then I devised a plan for the Green Bastard. Okay. So over the winter, I am rebuilding the Green Bastard into the most awesome uh, Dr Pepper Circle Track race. You're literally <laughs> building a purpose-built. Oh yeah, we're doing XR flat track or CFR mini 50 bike. forks. Okay, with real dirt bike bars, 12-inch spoked wheels, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. torque converter, right. the whole nine. The whole, going, the whole thing's getting made. I'm addicted. You know, a lot of the old, well, a lot of snowmobiles are a pool start motor. No, you could. Yeah, yeah. You could go a three-cylinder oh, Yamaha 440 exciters. So cheap. cheap, like <laughs> two stroke, 200 bucks, 300 yeah, bucks. Wisconsin, that's a dark. Oh, so you could put that motor in the in the. Yeah. 
Oh. You can trade that for a case of beer. I'm in. If you find that motor, I'll put it in. Well, all I got is all I got is old exciter. But you know, hey, you know, for you, that's cool. Did you under your liquid fire? You blow my drive, and we'll call it even. Did you see? I don't know if it was Yamaha or not, but this last winter, did you see the the face their YouTube commercials that they did for the sleds, where they had the guy that's like. He'll never leave two-stroke, and he's riding this 1960s two-stroke with the bad helmet and everything. Yeah, yeah. And he, he'd never given up 30 years. He's like a hardcore right. snowmobile with the accent. And so they had all the Yamaha guys bring out all the electric start, four-strokes, yeah. oh, all this yeah. stuff. He's like, ah, nah, ain't going to go like this. Yeah. And so they find him frozen to his thing because it wouldn't start. <laughs> and the guy puts him on the thing and takes him, and he finally like, well, yeah. comes to terms with the fact that he had to leave two-stroke snowmobile. It's a great series, man. I know jet ski guys that are the same way. They still want to ride the <coughs> Kawasaki two-stroke right. stand-up jet skis and the whole deal. And I'm like, yeah, <coughs> swim behind your shit. Get in the water behind your shit. And when you come up looking like a, you know, one of our little birds that we pull out of the water, like, you know, yeah. you know, you know, like you're, you're, you're yeah, the Don, official black gull. Dawn detergent spot. Yeah, I was going to say, you got to break out the dawn. <laughs> so our very tra attractive and scantily clad cocktail waitress at the bar, because later on, they actually, she was like making extra money. Oh, yes. she would. Oh. And, and li lived up on. Yardage. How so? What is it? Lake Havasu or whatever? Lake Havasu. Yeah. yeah. So right. she lives up by the well, lake. Lake Mead, probably. Yeah. Lake Mead, maybe. Yeah, okay. Lake Mead. So yeah. I, she was showing one of the other bartenders a video on her mm -hmm. phone. Mm -hmm. And I see it's this person on a stand up jet ski doing right. a backflip. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, yeah, I finally nailed the backflip. I'm like, <gasps> She finally nailed the back. Look. I'm like, wow. On a stand-up jet ski? Yes. And I'm like, that's wow. killer. I'm like, so what year is that? Like an old stand? She's like, no, it's a new one. No, they still build them. Yeah, yeah they still yeah, build they still the newer ones. So I was surprised to learn that they were still building no, new stand-up jet skis. That, the demand for performance in that market has meant that technology is still there on. It's just that those machines that used to be 440s and that and power are now 100 horse. I forget what she was saying, what the, you know, what the motor in it was, but she was like, Oh yeah, on mine, you know those old ones. They're like, eh, eh. on mine. As soon as you hit that throttle, it stands right up on the Christmas. I wonder how much those first sixty hurt. Yeah. That she was able to nail. She had to get bigger implants just yeah. to make sure that when she passed oh, out, she, she didn't big die. Jet ski. I, mean, I, was, I was just literally looking past her butt cheek, but it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful just. Like on the water and a little bit of a bump and yeah. just brr, like she just hit she the had just goose the throttle on the Look, thing. Look, if you can over. do a backflip on any goddamn thing, I'm already <laughs> impressed. Right. I can't do a backflip on my feet, and I've had those my whole life. I think I'd rather try it on that than anything, though. Right. right? At least you're landing back, back in yeah. water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it could fucking well, suck it to have that thing land yeah. on top yeah. of you yeah. up yeah. on your back. Still, it's still, yeah. A wait, I think. So introduce yourself from Rochester, New York. Yeah. Ben Ruth, happy to be here. He's a podcast listener. Hey, podcast right, listener. Thank you. Yes. Came to the shop today, and Renee talked him into staying. So he went and brought us the mystery oh, bag. No, that was an original plan. This is no, podcast you said is this bonus. Is, yeah, you said this is from Rochester. Yeah. Oh. So there's so, a local brewery there. Please tell me it's not a carburetor. It's cold. No. <laughs> no. Whoa, dude! This is a Scotch ale. <laughs> so local bre brewery, Genesee is also out of Rochester, but that's this right. is a little, more, is a little more unique. So oh, Red Wing Red Ale, look at this! Ooh. Yeah. Man, that's fantastic! So the name Ooh. of this local brewery is Roarbox. Roarbox. Wow, it's very good in Germany. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's that a gluten. Yeah. Is there right. a local family up there? When you yeah, say so. Scotch ale, now yep. does that mean it has like is that a bourbon barrel or is that just a Scottish? Well, it's usually style. it's a style, it's a and style. it's usually an ale with kind of a sweet. You know, yeah. Yeah. Those are, my favorite. are those? I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd take a red ale. I'm that's happy to share one. some uh, Bloody Mary if everyone's a spicy Bloody Mary. <laughs> no, Luke, you can't that have any. You. That's not I think you burned it. <laughs> you guys, you can give Sleepy a slug to make sure he. Have I earned one, Uncle Phil? You should get in there. Oh yeah, no, everybody can get in there, and then we'll bring glasses if people want to share them around or something. No, we all have cooties. It's all fun. I think we should just share them. I mean, what the hell? We bump into. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. It's not quite a. It almost has a cream flavor to the end of it. Well, it's a little creamy coffee yeah. finish and everything. Yeah. It's yeah. Not That's delicious. Right. Yeah. It's just the right temperature for that. Too. What's the ABV on that sucker? Oh, it's nice. a little higher than average, but not crazy high. It's not quite as stout, it's, but it's almost there. Yeah. That's no, really but you know delicious. what, though? Some Scotch ales can suck, though. Like they can go yeah. way too hardcore. I tend to like that's them. Not, that's not. I do too, usually. I tend to like them too. Really good. Like, go uh, ahead, fire it up. Dale's. Uh, McCune's. No, Dale's. Uh, Old Chubb, they call it. Scott Old Chubb, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good so one. So what do you normally ride, sir? 
I got a Triumph uh, Sprint RS. Oh, mm. Noise. I really like it. We like those. Two. Yeah, we like <clears> I've only been riding it for about two months. Yeah. I had an XS400 that I rebuilt, and I sold that to a oh, really? hipster. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was conditions. Nice move. It was well. It was conditions on my wife because I used her Christmas bonus to get the Triumph. So she said, "You gotta sell." You gotta sell the XS. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's you're good. a man of your word that you found the right. I was very happy to make the deal. No, so that's cool. And yeah. uh, so, do you have any friends that you ride with in Rochester? Oh yeah. Rochester's got quite a few people. Up we there. got a good. We got a good motorcycle scene in Rochester. Fantastic. So we got there's a network of like 200 of us. Are you guys going to do the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride this year? Yeah. Fucking great, man. Yeah. We did yeah. it last year, and we had... It's kind of a bittersweet thing. We had we had so many people show up last year that weren't, you know, into the dress and impress kind of thing yeah. that they're limiting it to just vintage bikes. Yeah. So, I'm out. No, you're not. Because according to the rules for the DGR, because somebody here had to sign, read and sign all 19 pages of that document... <laughs> In yeah. the videos. Um, according, yeah, and we had to watch all the videos. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is vintage or vintage inspired. So, your Triumph. I think. Did I say Triumph? It, I did say Triumph. It says Triumph on it, it says right? Triumph on it. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was just saying, it says Triumph. Triumph. Right. Right. Yeah, you're good. In fact, they're sponsors of the guy. Oh, right? oh my golly, they are. And did you say your bike was 92? 2002. Oh, I was going to say it's nearly yeah. a historical vehicle, but yeah. 16 years old. 16, 16 years, years old. Yeah. yeah, my God. We yeah, could drive a car. It, well, I think you should try it. We have a big builder scene. Yeah. So they're trying to do <coughs> do like the, the idyllic pictures going yeah. down the row houses oh, and really? getting the national campaign. So. We had a police officer last year show up on a Hayabusa. Cool. In a tuxedo. <laughs> was a Hayabusa decked out like police looking? No, or? it was just oh. a Hayabusa. <laughs> okay. But... I was so happy to have that guy show up at our event. And I believe that the spirit of the event is everything. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he'd raised $1,500 for charity. People, you know, kind of sponsored for him and stuff. He'd really worked the thing. He'd worked it really well. And if he wants to show up on a Hayabusa, and he, that dude had the fucking tails on. I mean, mm-hmm. full face lid and, and fucking tails. Mm-hmm. God, fucking more power to him, man. Totally more agree. power to him. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't want to exclude well, maybe, anybody. Maybe, and I don't know how much sway you have, but maybe you could suggest something like for the photo op, or only, you know. Oh, they do recommend yeah. that modern bikes be towards the rear. That's what yeah, I was going to say. About doing that. Let all the yeah. vintage bikes roll out. It's actually everything. in the rules. I would never want anybody to not come. Right. Just mm-hmm. say, hey, we're going to keep all the old shit up right. front, and then you guys can yeah. play clean up. And, and when one of the old ones breaks down, we expect one of you guys to stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually Put all the, the fast bikes at the in back. In the official right. DGR rules, it does say, we're not saying that you're not welcome. We're, we're asking yeah. that if you are going to attend on modern bikes, that you please keep to the rear. So they want the initial impact to be dapper gentlemen on vintage style bikes. Yeah, the parade bikes up front. Right, exactly. Because yeah, you want to be inclusive. You know, a lot of people don't have money to have 15 different bikes. Hey, you know? I'm going to say, if you happen to be attending the DGR in Cleveland and you see a dude on a fucking mini bike with a, 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 a orange polyester leisure suit... His name's Steve. With a snowmobile motor. The, everything that we... Remember the dudes... For the past two years, all those guys that are in the Grom, like mm-hmm. the Cleveland mini riders... Cleveland mini riders yeah. The well, Cleveland mini riders... They show up to win. I wonder if the one guy, what was his, yeah. he was at the podcast with his, he's down in Florida now. Yeah. He was, Adam. Yeah. He, Adam. Adam was Adam. one of the Grom guys. He was one of our Grom guys. And they showed up beautiful, like they, they, they had it nailed. Sure. And you can't say that you're not riding vintage when you're riding a Trail 70, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you win, dude. Congratulations. You're on a monkey bike, motherfucker. That is a, that is a vintage <laughs> bike, any way you slice it. And they were having fun. They did all the wheelies. Everywhere we went. Oh, they had like 200cc piranha motors. <laughs> yes. They did. They were, those things were awesome. And I think there should be some consideration to how much your bike is broken down before you got it there. So even if it's like a 10-year-old bike, if you had to fucking fix it 150 times, that's a vintage motorcycle. Hey, dude, if you Because my Stella at no, this point is basically inspired. a 1942. <laughs> or we could just obey the standard rule, and that is just hipster that fucker and put a brown seat cover on it. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. It's vintage. If it took more than two bikes to make the current bike you're riding, right. yeah. you're in. It may, be a, it, may, it may be a Kawasaki 750 Ninja, but it's got a brown ostrich seat cover. <laughs> <laughs> and the entire Wait. subsection cut off. Oh, and an extended swinger. Yes. We got that. one of those in, in the hallway <laughs> for sale. Mm. <laughs> Just, uh, we're tired of pushing it in. <laughs> Somebody needs to buy that fucking bike. 
The uh, okay, yeah, thing. So that's that. What have you been riding, Nick? I've been riding nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, sweet ass Fiat rally car. <laughs> I, uh, I just, which is not legal for SCCA racing. No, he has not, told me. No, it's on the exclusion list. The Fiat 500. Not oh, a bar. Hold a second. It's got the reverse lockout. It's the exclusion. Yeah. So why is it on the exclusion it's list? Rollover risk. It's it's taller than it is wide. <laughs> 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 At least in stock form. <laughs> so if you cut oh, the roof off. Yeah. What about a convertible then? Uh, I don't know. Uh, SCCA does not want to let Fiat only, only for fall. autocross. I don't know about other events, but right. for autocross. Oh, so that's that hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they make you like make you have a penalty and put like a five hundred pound like, plate in the floor, like the like, <laughs> four <laughs> lines. Yeah, so it doesn't roll. The floor, the four to come line Vrux. <laughs> There was a great video, you can look at it, where, she where Chevy Corvair, like the Greenbriars and stuff, are showing how unsafe Ford Econoline Vrucks are, like 1962 or four <laughs> or something. And they show doing a maximum energy break in a Ford Econoline pickup truck, mm -hmm. and the thing puts its wipers on the asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because a couple of years later, or maybe a year later, they gave you the safety pack, which was a 500-pound steel plate that was welded to the floor. No, no, the behind the rear bumper. Behind the rear bumper. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to keep it from doing that. Awesome. To keep it from doing stoppies. <laughs> <laughs> who'd, who'd have known in 62 that shit would become cool? Doing stoppies uh, at every red light. Do you remember there was a guy that in a van? Yeah. <laughs> there was a guy that built a drag racing car on one of those, and they used to r run it backwards. Run it backwards, yeah. And it, yeah, 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 that was pretty cool. And Chris Smith yeah. showed up a little late. Chris, have you been doing any motorcycle riding? Just uh, run the Suzuki, yeah, uh, around a little bit, and uh, other than that, just living that way. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you forgot somebody? Oh, have you been doing any motorcycle riding, young Luke? Yes. Yeah, what have you been riding? The CT90. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Boy, are, has this ex He's... has this gone beyond the backyard? No, I, I don't know. Has it? <laughs> 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 hey, look, dude. I was waiting for him to say it because I know there's rules, and I know you're supposed to stay in the backyard. But I can tell by the look on your face you didn't stay in the backyard. He looks no. too happy. I'm not sure in neighbors' backyard. Okay, neighbors' backyards. <laughs> Okay, no. someday you're going to figure out how to get from your backyard to, like, the nearest corner store, like, candy shop, quarter store, and you'll figure out how to do it all through backyards. Yep. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's a ton of woods back behind those Yeah, there guys, are a lot but... of woods. <laughs> yeah, not like it used to be. Yeah. Oh, man. Not I know you're is. wishing that AMA Vintage Days was every weekend. Every uh, weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Luke you can ride is, anywhere I, you want. Luke is like, I've been to heaven, and it's called AMA Vintage Days. <laughs> <laughs> I was still waiting for him that whole weekend to find the limits of the gas tank of that, oh, that yeah. CT. Well, I filled I, it up at least once. Yeah, yeah I was going right. to say, yeah. That, like, Did Luke? I tell you my brother broke his tailbone at AMA Vintage Days? <laughs> <laughs> remember when I had him on the back of the ruckus? Yes, He was I sitting do. on that hoop bar I back there. remember? Yeah, well. He, and that broke his tailbone? He legitimately broke his tailbone, yeah. Oh, so we had a real uh, injury at Amy Sounds Vintage like tailbone. you were riding, he was on the back, you legitimately broke his tailbone. Broke that's him. that's his version of the story, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I did come home with two broken toes, and I don't know where that happened. But they, <laughs> oh, I, I could probably guess. <laughs> well, okay, well, I, the one ride I took with you, you crashed five times. So okay, yeah. well, that <laughs> might have been <laughs> I had a hell of a bruise on the back of my left foot, I think, from when we went over the, uh, not a ramp. Not a ramp. Not uh, a ramp. Uh, what was good about Sleepy is Sleepy did say that from the minute he arrived at Vintage Days until he left, he was never going to stop drinking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can certify that as a, not as a notary. Yeah. He did not lie. No. It was the plan. I, if I had my stamp with me... Then I would have stamped you. Yes. No, that was <laughs> that. When I take vacations, that is that's what I want to do. You yeah. know? Yeah. You were re re remarkably resilient, though. Eh. At one point, <laughs> he, was, he wasn't even human. I thought I saw a lizard. Yeah, they I saw happened. nothing but lizard brain. He was just like, his eyes were darting around. <laughs> it's a good yeah. thing his mini bike just mysteriously stopped working Saturday yeah, night. Yeah, I figured that out. Yeah, figure that out. <laughs> Look, I'm just telling you. you a, real friend, a real friend will fuck your shit up. <laughs> 
Yeah, just in the right. It was moment. crazy how it started on the first pull. The next, the next day. Morning, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> when you let it rest for the night. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Also, yeah, the magic yeah, thing yeah, about motorcycles or these kind of people, yeah, when they get too long. drunk, they quit running. I know. <laughs> Maybe that last crazy. time you crashed, it it got right. oil up in the yeah. <laughs> spark plug boot yeah. just fell he off. He loves me, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you gave whole new definitions to drunk asshole. There were like whole new parameters were set for drunk asshole. Here, uh, oh me? Yes, you. What did I do? You were a super duper drunk asshole. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Now, one second. Now, look. What? That's coming from somebody who was only able to judge you for about nine and a half minutes. Okay. Right. And then I got right caught up with you. Okay. Because I realized at one point. You were, bad for a minute. You were drunker than the hour of the day would allow. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. By my standards. Okay. Right. right. So yeah. then I realized I was 30, 40 minutes behind. Right. Well, we, we worked got on there. that. Yeah, we worked on that. Nobody, but yeah. Nobody yeah. died. It's yeah. all good. Well, it's. I like when the alcohol gets to the point where the finger pointing starts, and when the, when you're like, you either got to carpet bomb that guy or take his bike away. <laughs> <laughs> so we're either gonna put him down for the night, more alcohol, right? More alcohol, a lot more alcohol, or less bike. <laughs> well, when his bike stopped working, he went right to bed. He did. It was fun. It was yeah, hilarious. He was like, "Well, this isn't fun anymore." <laughs> <laughs> this isn't fun at all. I can, I can tell ride. you, without a bike, it's not fun. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I had to walk everywhere. Well, you oh, sold God. your bike. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Yeah, you're gonna, what are you gonna do next time? Put a Sunday clause on that. Yep. Yeah. Take a, a trailer on the back yeah. of the 500. Yeah. yeah. With a few bikes yeah. on it. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's true. That's a really good idea. Don't sell your don't sell yourself into walking. If you put a Versa hauler on the back of the Fiat, it would be like one of those penny racers from when we were kids. To put the penny in it and it does a wheelie. <laughs> the Fiat. With the Versa Hall. <laughs> With wheelie kit. <laughs> that's hilarious. Just put a but you probably put a C T ninety on there. That's very that's very good. The uh so everybody I Right now, I feel like we're just going to... Okay, we're going to do this so that we can be a motorcycle podcast. Okay. <laughs> we kind of are. Hold on. It's going to stop. It'll only last for a little while, but we're going to do it. Okay. We're going to say it. Harley Davidson. <sighs> okay, so their new stuff they're bringing out is the Adventure Bike. Now, is that... <laughs> is that <laughs> <laughs> the Adventure... Sorry, I threw up in my mouth a little. <laughs> is it now, is the Adventure bike 1,000 cc's, or is that 1,200? I, I stopped looking as soon as I saw a Harley Adventure bike. I, I have no I idea. I think it's 1,200. You think it's 1,200? Yeah, I do think it's But it's not anything resembling... So all these motors are based on the narrow 60-degree V-twin? No. I believe... Something. But it's a liquid cooled motor, right? Right. We're all talking about liquid cooled motors here. So a revolutionary new motor. But it did look, if you look at it, the eighty three magnet. And you look so at the yeah, I was gonna say, so the, the eighty three shadows. The motor. streets mm -hmm. that came out, the five hundred and seven fifty with right. the shadows. Yeah. Now they've brought the trans alp out. Yes, they have. <laughs> 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 they perfected yeah. the yeah. Honda Trans Alp. <laughs> but I mean like My it question does... is what is this bike in another market? Because that's usually what they do. It's like, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we've done a little bit of research. What is going on, Mr. Uh, I was trying to find something, Sweet but now the joke's Jesus. dead. All right. But so, so <clears throat> Harley Davidson Cylon sound, and there's the 1000 that is the uh, what they're calling it the hooligan bike, the street, street fighter, track. yeah, street, street fighter, fighter, right? 1000 yeah. cc based on the 750, which is based on the 500. Right. So we've got this liquid cooled 500 that's turned into a 750 that is available in the street mm -hmm. bikes. We're all gonna just say Harley Davidson Indian manufactured 500 cc and 750 um, built as the biggest homage I can find to a Honda Shadow. Uh, <laughs> the Harley I, I Shadow? Tried, I've looked. It's a beautiful homage to the Honda Shadow, and it really is. Uh, and nobody can, Nobody's done it better. Oh, man. Just, sorry. I just thought of something that kind of goes along with the homage thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a friend of mine pointed out, uh, we were riding, and we saw somebody with their Harley parked. Yeah. And he's like, ah, stealth radiator. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> he goes, stealth radiator. Yeah. I'm like, those little fins down there? He's like, see the crash bars? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. He's like, they push the fluid to the head. Right. Yes, they do. That's exactly right. He's like, they yeah. basically hid the, the radiator bars. so they don't have to admit they have anything yeah, liquid cooled. Crash bars are plumbing. Yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I looked it over and was like, you got to use the crash bars. Crash bars. It's functional until you crash. I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, they still become crash bars. Um, I don't want to come on that. I don't want to really, really destroy that too badly because I've owned many Hondas. Where the frame mm -hmm. has been plumbing. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? oh yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. It Triumph did that too. Yeah, there's been uh, yeah, quite yeah, a few people. Yeah. There's have been done a couple that. of people yeah. who have done that frame as plumbing. Um, but it's really cool when one of your customers comes in and says he mounted these new foot pegs. And they're leaking coolant. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's got <laughs> fluid pouring out of the hole he just drilled for his crash bars. <laughs> Didn't Buell carry fluid they, in the swing arm? They did or carry something? fluid in the swing arm. It's like yes. a big, a did. real big, heavy. Well, it's, oil. it's a large area oil in the swing arm. Oil, right. oil bag was a swing arm on the XB series, yep. and yeah. the uh, frame was a fuel tank. Yeah, yeah. Fuel that's, tank. that's yeah. right. Yep. yep. I mean, wow. you have these large areas due to the hollow. Mm-hmm. You know, formed, blow molded. Uh, makes sense. Materials. Yeah, it makes I mean, then it gets the center and it's gravity low. lower, and yeah. I mean, I think mean, about oil. Why not have as one part arm? that? Yeah, if you do it, you have to make a part anyway. Why right. not make it do multiple sure. jobs? Fuck yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I think but. that's a really good idea. In fact, that's <laughs> such a good idea that it makes what they're doing with the Indian Harley Davidson look make them look dumb for getting rid of the Buell innovations, because the Buell innovations were almost twenty years ago now. And they said no to that, and they've gone for oh, older yeah. technology. You know, somewhere Eric is turning up tales of great oh, yeah. Ulysses or whatever. The hell <laughs> 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 so, so here's an interesting thing, and I've been listening to everybody on all the podcasts talk about it. And why do you suppose Harley Davidson wanted so desperately to open a factory in India? Anyone? I'll throw it out there. European access market. to market. Financially yeah. driven. In okay. One way or another. Access to market. Indian market. Yeah. Do you know that the Indian motorcycle market is over 22 million motorcycles per year? Jeez. They make, chi- they, they push China well the fuck out of the way. Don't they have a billion people there? They do. Yeah. Yeah, they do. It's 22 million motorcycles per year. That's a pretty fucking big market. Yeah. And uh, if you can get a piece of that market, you're feeling pretty good about yourself, right? And so the Street 500, Street 750 program have gone on now for quite a few years. It's not the first time we've said these words, Street 500, Street 750. You like to know which motorcycle you can't buy in India? Street 750? Please don't tell me. Oh, I'm going to tell you. Street 500? Street Street 500. They don't sell it in India. Really? I checked their website. Was that like the government trying to protect Mm -hmm. Enfield or something? No, I don't think it is. Now, what I will tell you is regarding tariffs, there is a 100% tariff <clears throat> against Harley Davidson's coming into India. Yeah. Hmm. It's true. Not, not fucking around. It is absolutely true. 100%. 100%. It's 100% tariff on motorcycles coming into India. They also have a 60%. You, you can argue that, Chris. Well, I, I, I actually had some data I couldn't find. I was going to bring, bring it today. I thought I read Pakistan, but I could be wrong. Well, there is. There's several of them. So several different yeah. com- countries I, do several different yeah, tariffs. I, the one document that I saw a couple yeah. of weeks ago when this came up, I yeah. went back and looked up. And Pakistan was 100. India was like 62 or something like that. But, yeah. you know, I could be wrong. I don't well, want to get the... I checked today. And yeah. today as of today, it's 100%. Okay. And, uh, well, and Harleys aren't we did, cheap, so any kind of tariff right. is going to suck, especially 100%. So... I have some pricing for you. I don't want to buy a Harley, and I can't afford to buy it. <laughs> if you're in India right now and you buy the fanciest, um, so because there is a graduated licensing system there, but there's also a graduated taxing system there. So the uh, the fanciest uh, Royal Enfield, which would be the 650, the new twin. So the fanciest 650, which is the new twin, in India, because that motorcycle is not meant for their home market. It's actually built for export. Hmm. Really? I know. Because of their their <coughs> registration laws there. The 650 is. Yeah. Okay. The 650 is. So um, a Bullet Classic, a 500cc, which is their top of the line in India, costs dead rupee to U.S. translation at today's value, $3,140. Okay. Okay. It's pretty okay. Pretty decent. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty decent, right? Um, that bike in America is about forty nine ninety nine. Okay, so you know I've seen them go between forty nine ninety nine and fifty five ninety nine for the U.S. version of that bike, which does get charted up quite a bit between India and the United States for our EPA and our NHTSA. That's equivalent to the Himalaya, then, because that's what it is. The Himalaya is a three fifty powertrain. Okay, so it's a smaller powertrain, but uh, yeah, and their six fifty, which is the the twin cylinder. Uh, Royal Enfield. Mm-hmm. Um, those are in India over five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now here's an interesting thing: the HD 
the Harley Davidson Street 750, built in India. In the United States, that bike costs seventy five hundred ninety eight dollars. Did you like to guess what that bike costs in India? Where it's built? Where it's built? Where it's built in India? Yeah. It costs seventy five ninety eight MSRP according to Harley Davidson's website here in the United States for the Street Seven Fifty. In India, that motorcycle costs exactly the fucking same seven thousand five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Over twice, in fact, 240% more than the Royal Enfield Bullet Classic, mm -hmm. which is the top of the line Royal Enfield that 500cc that an Indian person would want to buy. So over two and a half times. Now, this is going to be great. You guys are going to love this because numbers are fun. So what market are they trying to hit? Because if that's insane. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's yeah, really, really offensive. <laughs> so... <laughs> in the United, you can't offend us. In yeah. India, 22 million units <clears throat> sold last year. Okay? This is as of April. These numbers are as of April. So they're relatively fresh. <clears throat> We're in a fuck, like, Hero Motor Company sold 6.8 million motorcycles. Honda sold 6.3 million motorcycles. Bejaj sold 2 million motorcycles. Mm. But Royal Enfield, Royal Enfield, who doesn't make a scooter, they just don't make a scooter. Royal Enfield sold 74,627 units in they India. <clears throat> well, they own it, but that's motorcycles. That's big 350cc yeah. bikes that are out of the reach of those people. When you say Hero Motor, we're talking mostly about 125. 125s. Yeah, yeah, 150 right. things. It's at the lowest it's taxing, a Chinese brand, lowest right? insure. Uh, no, Hero is uh, Indian. Is it? Uh, yeah, they used to call it Hero Kinetic. Okay. But yeah, it wasn't an offshoot of Honda or like Honda. It's he, Honda's involved. Yeah, Hero Honda. right. Yeah, and both of these, both Honda and Hero Motors, are both indigenous to India, by the way. Okay, now this is the great thing. Harley Davidson moved their production to India so they could capitalize on a 22 million bike market. They moved production and created the 500 and the 750 to capitalize on the Indian market. How many bikes did they sell there last year? Well, Not enough. Yeah. Anyone? Thirty-five thousand. Under ten thousand, I'd say. One hundred and sixty-three units. Oh, oh, oh fuck your house! You didn't do it to sell bikes in India. You did it to sell bikes in America that were cheaper to build mm -hmm. in yeah. India. And so you can't admit question. that. You can't admit that when you you're the American that. company. When you're America. This fuck is the yeah. question I wanted to ask you because I got in a few arguments on yeah. various. Facebooky things, right? <laughs> and the Harley guys I know no. will swear up and down on yeah. a stack of any religious book right. you want right. that the Harley Street 750 sold in America yes. is 100 percent made in America. Define made. That's what I said. Yeah. Define. They, made. they said the motors are made. No, and they are absolutely I, not. I know, and I absolutely. I, I was not. like, it's not. It's absolutely not. It is. It's no. made in this plant and this no. and that and the no. blah, 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 blah. And I'm then, like... Then, then no. bring them a picture of somebody fatter than them putting one together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> tell, them, tell them their Harley was made in an Indian plant. Right. Well, that's the point. And the Indians were made in America. The Indians are made... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Triumph, who it does not... Triumph, who has not decided to have any manufacturing in India, but eats it on the 100% tariff, just like Harley does... Remember, they're both sucking the same dick. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, it's 100% tariff. Are other tariff. countries like Japan and everything, they're all getting that same 100% tariff? Yeah. Well, yeah. Anybody outside of India. Jeez. Well, but you got to remember, Piaggio's addressed it by having an assembly plant in India. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have certain models that you do in India, mm -hmm. and those are your Indian market models. And Piaggio, in Piaggio numbers, it's depressing because it's only 6,859 bikes. That's really shit for Piaggio. But... They also know that they don't want to piss in India's pool because right. you can't. You can't afford to go in there. Piaggio has realized it's not worth it for them to build a factory to go in and sell against Hero or to sell against Honda. So Triumph, who didn't build a factory in India to encourage sales, because this is why Harley apparently opened the factory in India, which they could take a piece of that 22 million bike market. <laughs> Good Triumph job. sold 110 units. So Triumph didn't build a factory, and because they didn't build a factory, it only cost them 53 bucks. <laughs> if you're not feeling dumb with your Harley stock right now, you should be. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, because Triumph sold damn near as many as you did without opening a factory there. And that's fucking crazy, man. Uh, and we could... The more I dug into this rabbit hole, the worse it got. Um, in Harley-Davidson U.S., we have, of course, the Harley-Davidson Street 500, the Street 750, and the Street Rod. Um, the Street 500, when I went to Harley-Davidson India's website, ain't fucking there. Uh, in India, you can't buy a 500cc Harley-Davidson. Hmm. It is only the Street 750 and the Street Rod at rupees uh, 525,000 versus rupees Do we know why that is? is? Are they, again, I trying don't to know. protect that 500cc Harley? Maybe they're trying to hold that for their own home team, <clears throat> the Royal Enfield. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. wouldn't be the worst thing ever Ronald Reagan did in the 80s to, to protect Harley-Davidson. Wait, are we talking about India or... I can't... I lost mm. track. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. but yeah, that's a real thing, and it's really happening. And it, it shocked me when I couldn't find prices for a Street 500 in India. Uh, it is not kidding, though. The Street uh, 750, you get... And by the way, that uh, Harley-Davidson Street 750, which is made in India at only $7,598, is a fucking bargain when you compare it to the Iron 883, which... I'll give you a second here. I'll give you the price on this. A uh, 883. Which is made where? Iron. Supposedly in America. <laughs> so his crop just... shakes his head. Right. I mean, we. I think we can all agree that it's probably assembled in the United States somewhere. Uh, 9.23. Let me do the math on this real quick. Not myself. I'm using Google. 9.23. Google. Man. Lock. Okay, are you ready? The Iron. The Harley-Davidson Iron. Is thirteen thousand three hundred and fifty eight dollars. Jesus. If you buy one in India. Well then. And that's why they've only sold a hundred and some bikes yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Because the cheapest Harley you can buy in this country is thirteen thousand three hundred and fifty eight dollars there. So what you just proved is the fact that like they're using the they're they're trying to tell people that they're moving there to sell bikes there, but they're right. just they're just moving there to make they're cheap bikes. Like Don't you think for a second they're moving there? To sell into a 22 million bike market, right? Because they sold 150. Yeah, they didn't price their, they priced themselves well, right out of the market, is what they did. Right. right. Well, exactly. but you know, why do you think they want? They don't want to sell them. For, I'm sorry, I stepped right on Chris. Stage, Chris. Well, I was just going to say, you know, from a marketing standpoint, it's going to take a number of seasons, years for that to kind of grow up and get some acceptance. This is their third year. Okay. So it's their and, third year and, in that market. Well, yeah. and what what part of the world doesn't know about Harley though? It's it's not a matter of not knowing about Harley. I mean, they that twenty two million sales, or however many you said. I mean, people have to migrate off of that into the Harley market. Right. So, yeah, right. you know, to to say that they're only going to max out at one hundred and sixty eight, I think, is a little premature as far as. Well, I, I agree with that, but at the same time, if they really wanted to hit that market, they would have produced a bike that would be acceptable to that market, I think. Maybe a premium bike, but they're at $13,000 for the high-end bike. That's, or th what is it? What did you say? Uh, uh, 650 million rupees, or what was it? I can tell you. For which one? For the Sportster? Yeah. Well, no, this is best. Pete, what's the number you just came up with, sir? Median the, the income? The annual median per capita income in India is $616 which ranks 99th out of 131 countries. Right. Well, I'm going to let that settle in for a little while. <laughs> well, that, and that's kind so, of the thing that the so, cost... Wait. So let's tell Annual? You what, yes. Annual. <laughs> so, about, so wait, so wait. So when you were talking about... You didn't I say rupees. Like three you Indian said... people last week. <laughs> so you we're said... Talking, the, talk about that Royal Enfield. It's $3,000... Um, that's five years. That's five salary. years of salary, yeah. and, yeah. and that's and that's kind of the thing. The cost of living there yeah. against here, and you're selling a bike the same price on right. both sides, and you're building it down there cheaper. Doesn't that up? I mean, you're. They're, well, that's they're what earnings. I'm saying. Like, why are why aren't they selling it for less than in this country? Obviously, it's way cheaper than seven thousand dollars. The slap in the face is that a street seven fifty costs the same in Kansas as it costs in Delhi, New yeah. Delhi. Yeah. And that's fucked up. <laughs> the fact that that at the bike very is least you, you should get a discount for not having to ship it here, and not, I mean, like right. for it to be domestic. The fact that that bike is seventy five ninety eight in insert name of Indian yeah. metropolis, and it's seventy five ninety eight in Kansas, is bullshit. Yeah, I mean that's bullshit. Yeah, and all I can see when I look at that number is one, they're making about a two hundred percent profit margin. In India, on the backs of the people who are building the fucker, 
Well, they're making a dollar a week no, doing only, it too. Well, there's only 168 people that they're making yeah. that 200% profit. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. like you've completely ignored that market and said, we don't care about you. We're shipping them home. But India has been yeah. tremendously prosperous prosperous in the last 20 years. I mean, the, the top 1.5 percent of it half. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so maybe Sounds that's familiar. their target market. Is right. that the top percent. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. And Harley Davidson isn't concerned about the 22 million shoulders they're standing on. They're concerned about, clearly, the 150 people that bought them there. Or maybe they're just concerned about shipping them home to us assholes. Well, yeah. Is it so, just that they got tired of hearing, well, you don't sell any entry-level motorcycles, so they said, here, here are some learner bikes if you really have to well, have a learner and that, bike. Well, they did that with Buell. That's true, too, though. No, I, I, I like that yeah. thought, though. I mean, they're right. trying to... Here's the Get bike that market. you can buy for your girlfriend. It's a well, market penetration you know, there. And they clearly, if anyone's been to the Harley dealer, we all know that when you go in there and ask for a street rod, before they show you <clears> one, <throat> you have to sit on six Sportsters first. You know, It's the throwaway bike. You well, want to buy a Harley for somebody who's not going to ride it. Right. Yeah. So, But, but you're also kid. dealing with a brand that has such loyalists, and all brands mm -hmm. have loyalists, mm -hmm. but these guys... So the whole thing that you brought up a couple podcasts ago with the motor having issues with the, the, the you know the plastic piece in it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Our our buddy, the the guy that was with us in uh, at the Mexican restaurant at uh, uh, Vintage Days, what's his name? The Who guy shall from... remain nameless. Okay. Okay. But from West Virginia, whatever. <laughs> well, that narrowed, <laughs> that narrowed it down. No, no, he's awesome. He's a great guy. <laughs> but one of his friends on his on his thing on the yeah. Facebooks or something. Right. Went off and and I said, you know, all these cheap hours there. I said, hey, you might want to listen to a couple podcasts ago because they kind of laid out some of the issues that's going on with some of these motors. Yeah. And this step dude, this dude put fifteen before I could even like do anything. He was just like, I've owned, I've been a Harley rider. Oh, I put seventy nine million miles and all this right. stuff. So I, it, the funny part is, is right now there's an article that exists that basically highlights. With diagrams, CNC pictures, and everything, <laughs> everything that you said. And it's kind of hard to find, but you can find it. Look, and if it you breaks it all down. And I put it to the guy, and he was like, ah, oh, that's fake news. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, buddy. Yeah, well, there you go, man. <laughs> so, but John? you have that, though. So, like, you know, it's funny because these guys will spread rumors. So, like, you're sitting here giving us facts yeah. about these bikes that are in India being produced in India and cost in India. And there's people in the United States that will completely deny it and say it's mm -hmm. a bunch of bullshit yeah. and that Harley rules. Well, good for you. I mean, yeah. glad you got a team, man. Yeah. I'm glad you finally found a camp that was willing to have you in it. What well, I wonder why didn't we say that it was BMW first, Harley Davidson second, and reliability. Yes, and yeah. you're exactly right. And then, in I'll I'll trot that back out for anybody who wasn't paying attention on numbers that we went and found um, that weren't too hard to do. Um, the number one least reliable motorcycle that you could buy in the United States yeah. um, of companies who sold more than seven thousand units. Uh, the number one least reliable motorcycle you could buy was uh, Harley Davidson. Number two was BMW. Mm -hmm. And yet those two companies are inverted when you look at brand loyalty. So when you look at brand loyalty, right. number one brand loyalty is uh, BMW. Number two right. is Harley Davidson. Right. At the moment, BMW owners are most loyal. Harley Davidson is number two. Uh, and that's changed because Harley Davidson owners were most loyal up until five years ago. Hmm. And so many Harley Davidson owners have become uh, less loyal to the brand in the past five years. Why is that, do you think? I know. And well, in the, in this year, they've become much more loyal to Indian. There's been they that have, yeah. And I'm going to oh. say, I don't think that Indian was not paying attention to that, and that's why they turned the volume down on Victory, so they could turn the volume sure, up on Indian. Because you back your fastest, you you know, look, everyone pitches the ball to LeBron, right? If you're holding the ball and your name's not LeBron, you're probably wrong, right? And I think that's what happened at India. I think that was a, a big part of that. Yeah, so that, was, uh, that was my sports metaphor for the year, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. They, they realize, yeah, yeah. by the way, <laughs> I've said it before, yeah. and I'm sure I'm not the only one, but they realize that there is a percentage of market share that you're never going to acquire, you're never going to get right. without that American name, without yeah, without exactly. that, exactly. You know, <coughs> you know they're I, I mean, they could be virtually the same bikes. Some of them kind of are, like technology wise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, my curiosity is this: when we look at Harley Davidson making this change, this is a significant change. And if you're not paying attention to it, you might should be. And I know a lot of podcasts are beating the shit out of this right now. 
But remember, for the first time in a long time, Harley Davidson has looked away from the, the glide. Yep, yep. The American market. They've, they've looked away from the glide. They've buried the Dyna. So they buried the Dyna and brought out in its place some news of an adventure Cylon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the adventure Cylon oh, no. is getting built where? I, I'm not going to, don't want to do that yet. But, but here's the thing. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll say it. It ain't going to be fucking Kansas. It ain't going to be York, PA. It damn sure ain't going to be Milwaukee. I got bad news for you. It's going to be yet another thing built by brown people. And sold to white people. But, yeah. but here's the thing, though. So, like, <laughs> I'm a pretty <laughs> avid adventure guy. Yeah. I got my Super T. I love all the whatever. <laughs> yeah. They didn't, they didn't mess up a lot of the bike, though. Like, if you look at it and you really, really look at it, the, the subframe and stuff set to carry stuff. It's yeah. actually, it's like... The whole bike, I mean, they're using, like, BMW rims. You can tell they're using tubeless, like, tires with the, mm -hmm. the spokes to come spokes, out. Yeah, and all side, that stuff. Side nipple spokes. It, it's yeah. all there. But yeah. the thing, so there's a huge nipple. discussion on a, a forum that I might yeah. go on once in a while, whatever. <laughs> and uh, the thing the is, nipple. is that with that motor, the, the, the lightest weight bike that they have with that motor yeah. in it is around 700 pounds. Okay? So unless they have so some, off adventure, some <laughs> crazy metallurgy or nah. anything, they still shove this fat motor into this frame. They fill the frame with helium. They, I do <laughs> think it's going to be, I mean, based on what I saw, it does look to be a liquid-cooled motor. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But, but here's the thing. You got, yeah. you got so Super T's, 550, 525, uh, Africa Twins, 550, 575. BMW. That makes the VFR 1200 adventure look l much less absurd. Yeah, <laughs> the VFR 1200 adventure is a is a sporting lightweight compared to what they're trotting out. Right. Well, that's what I'm right. saying. This thing's got to be 700 pounds. Right. I mean, there's no there's no way it's not 700 pounds, I, I, and that's not going to be fun on a greasy muddy road trying to do anything with it. Yeah, but there's a Harley Davidson dealer on every corner, so you can get it worked on. Yeah, well, yeah, you have that. Greasy again. muddy road. Uh, you you pull it into the parking lot, ash, go on the gravel, gravel, take the picture, and then drive back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why no Harley parking lots are gravel. The uh, right, <laughs> and the Street Fighter, the Street Fighter, I have no qualms with. Honestly, the Street Fighter's got a nice profile from the side. Um, I'm going to give a couple of minutes to the electric, only because they finally have art that isn't based on a Bramo. So if you've been watching and you're looking at, Pia at uh, Harley's latest blast of like as of nine days ago, mm -hmm. the artwork that's out for the new prototype that is supposed to be, we're down to six months, that as of 18 months ago would be introduced long around Christmas. So uh, <laughs> the clock is ticking, motherfucker. Um, I believe it's Alta. It's the Alta. That artwork is not yes. Harley's conception of their bike. Oh yeah, that's Alta's conception. Yeah. So anybody who knows electric motorcycles will know that Alta motors and Alta batteries have a very distinctive profile. The Alta powertrain has a very distinctive profile when compared to the Bram. It makes it look like an MZ motor. Yeah, it does. It, it looks like an MZ motor. It's, it's, it's a big monolith. <laughs> it's like an old BMW airhead that somebody lopped the cylinders off of. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's or the a K100 brick. It, well, it's just the the Alta Motors platform. When you look at an Alta dirt bike, it has a very distinctive shape to the battery compartment. Mm -hmm. So does Zero. I mean, Zero is square. It's you know, it's a cube. It's a monolith. It is a monolith. But the Alta is ripped for her pleasure. So the Alta has a very distinctive look to it. And when you do <laughs> finally look at this new Harley Davidson, you know, electric live wire uh, artwork. A uh, vaporware. Uh, when you look at it, you can now see the Alta in it because every picture we've seen up until now was like a rehashed Bramo, aka Victory. Uh, I don't know where that all went. It all fell apart. But the uh, but so now we are at least seeing some electric stuff from Harley Davidson that isn't based on a six or seven year old drawing. I haven't really looked too much into the electric. Harley, I've looked yeah. most of the adventure, but whatever. So have they released any specs on, like... Oh, like, no. Nothing? No. Like, well, they released some specs on the the Harley that was trotted around, that they, the purpose-built Harley yeah. that went around the show the circuit. The yeah. That was a prototype that probably won't ever go into production. And they were talking about, yes, it had something like 76 horsepower, at, you know, 76... But they weren't talking about how many miles before the, charging? They right? did in this article, that article that I copied everybody on that... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That... Yeah. They Cycle were, World Magazine. They were talking. Cycle that, World Magazine put out a very nice article yeah. talking about every bit of information that they had mm -hmm. that was given to them 
by people who cleared it for a press release. <laughs> but it wasn't impressive. They were talking that it that was bike. The worst. Yes. That but they were talking like forty. If you rode that bike at ninety miles an hour, you got forty miles on a charge. Oh. So zero is laughing. Zero is oh, even at, <laughs> at, se- at seventy miles an hour, you couldn't you couldn't get close to a hundred. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And by the way, Cycle yeah. World has really turned up. I mean, they have really turned up their product by reducing the number of issues they put out. Yeah. So they've said we're going to give you less per year, but what we're going to give you is really going to be a good thing. And like, I gotta give them credit. The Bonnier Group does not get a lot of my love ever, but. I like the fact that they've gone down to less episodes per year, but made it better, you know. And that's one less, you know, you know, magic pheromone fucking ad I need to see with what's her face looking at me trying to sell me 10x pheromone cream. They were actually, I mean, Alta as a, they were talking also about e-bikes and the 50 yeah. and cutting in into the 50 cc. They did. Market. They mentioned about the 50 cc market for sure. Uh, if you've ever ridden Cycle World, if you've ridden, if you've read in Cycle World for like the past 20 fucking years, like I have. You'll know that there's a chick in the back selling Pheromone 10X. And she's only <laughs> updated her pace, her picture one time. So that means she's 116 right now. <laughs> and she wasn't a pretty... So stuff worse. She wasn't a pretty girl to begin with. <laughs> Chris is like, what's a pheromone? Right. Pheromone 10X is a pheromone. street trigger. Wake up and smell the pheromones. Right. And at best, she could be described as being like, you know, Girl Scout Den Mother of the Year, 1976. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And she only updated her picture once since then. If you want to go in the bathroom, grab like an old Cycle World, bring it out. She has a, a little one sixteenth of a page ad that every time I was like, this is supposed to make my dick hard. And she literally looks like everybody's frumpy dumpy whatever, you know, the woman who bakes too many cookers for the PTA meeting. Um, yeah, that's it's, her. But at the day four, any motorcycle event is hot. Just saying. Look, man, just going to say. Yeah. Hey, hey, we've heard the term Chicago pretty. Yeah. I've seen an AMA Vintage Days 10. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a three in the real world. Mm. Yeah. The, uh, but yeah, they, they, they really are looking at that. I mean, I do think that Harley Davidson knows that the more they can say the following words, electric, San Francisco, green, and um, future, they, ha- they think they have a chance. What they haven't said was torque and range and affordability, which are three numbers, three words that zero has been the fucking god of for the past three years, four years. But so zero's gone past all that bullshit. They're saying we give we give a fuck about torque, range, and availability. You can get zeros for up to two thousand dollars off right now. Contact your local zero dealer. It's me. But, but don't you think that like <laughs> don't you think that zero pretty much at this point is kind of like the Netflix and like Harley and these guys are the the blockbusters. Yeah, like they have to figure out what to do. Like Zero has been leading this thing, and they're actually figuring out how to do this stuff. And they're the Netflix. They're the people that are making shows, and you can streamline, you can do whatever. And so all these other people are like, "Holy fuck! I own a fucking VHS sales company, and nobody's buying VHSs anymore." So they're trying to jump on it. So what are they going to do? At least they're they're trying to do something. I guess it's think? you know, Steve, um, a little bike. Mm-hmm. You know, a little fuel-efficient bike, or, you know, zero emissions, or a little tiny bike that's a bicycle, basically, mm-hmm. with some sort of an assist motor on it. And it has a Harley-Davidson badge on it. Where have we seen that before? AMF. Who's, who's my age? Me. I'm 47. I had an AMF moped. I had Who an remembers AMF the moped. Roadmaster? I mean, yeah. the Roadmaster. With the little flipper yeah. on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, the orange one. Yep. The orange that was my brown. first fucking yep. bike, With the dude. little flipper, you, yeah. it, you reach you around and you put the thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 that had da- Harley Davidson quality? I don't know, but I rode the shit out of mine, oh, dude. I love that thing. Right. It and? Has, it had AMF bowling ball quality. It did. <laughs> was there any air in the back tire? No. A solid rubber tire. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Against a roller, a friction okay. roller. A friction roller. And so they took yeah, they took a lesson from the French yeah. <laughs> with the Vela Solex. Yeah. And they made a rear friction drive two-stroke motor. Moped, yeah. That was all in one unit. Oh, yeah. On the world's worst bicycle. Worst bicycle. Yeah. The <laughs> shittiest bike you'd ever yeah. been around in your life. Do you know how many laps I did on that my dirt track in my backyard? A billion. If you took the motor off that bike, it still weighed 80 pounds. Yeah, yeah. It was a garbage bike. And it was painted safety orange. Safety orange with brown. It was Aztec orange. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. (laughs) With three stripes. Yeah, Yeah, three stripes. So there were three different color schemes. Baby vomit tan, Aztec orange, (laughs) and I failed at life brown. 
<laughs> and all I three of those, con- well, and all three of those had that same color contrasting in the stripe scheme. Yeah. So you could get tan with brown. Stri- you know, I'm, you know where I'm going with this, yeah. right? They all basically came in three colors of failure. That's and basically, it. that was my first bike. Yeah. Did me too. The AMF yes. Roachmaster. <laughs> meant I couldn't afford a Motobicon. Yep. Or a poop. <laughs> or a Piaggio. Dude, I put 10,000 miles online. Yeah. Easily. No yeah. Shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. I beat you know the why? shit out of that thing. Yeah. Because it was better than pedaling. Oh, yeah. But just barely. Slightly. That was my introduction to freedom, man. 15? Yeah. yeah. Or no, 14. You got more than... Moped was yeah. 14, right? 14, yeah. yeah. I cut grass. It was the only thing I could afford. I bought that bitch, and I just loved it. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and, and you know why? That's why hetero people will still walk. <laughs> oh, that, that shit, that is, that is like, you know why? If it went a little bit faster, just a little bit yeah. faster, Piaggio wouldn't have had a chance. Mm. But it didn't. Mm. It just sucked. No. Nope. Like, if, if it was raining out. Oh, the back tires. You no, couldn't no. go anywhere. No. <laughs> Any mud, you were done. You had to pedal. Oh, dirt? Yeah, yeah. No. We had the dirt trails and stuff on my house, and one kid one time showed up on a fucking Roachmaster, and he was like, check it out, I got a moped. He could go like 26, right? And meanwhile, we're like, I could still beat on my bicycle. Yeah. I mean, but then it would get slightly dirty or muddy out, and muddy, that kid would just yeah. be like, Fuck. No, dry Because mud he had was one great. gear, and yeah. it was the wrong gear. Dry was <laughs> fine, because it had... That little wheel, it was like sandpaper. Oh, the roller. Like, oh, the roller was gnarly. It was the a roller hard, was yeah. designed to destroy that back tire. Yeah, yeah. That had no air in it. Right. In like you know, you know, a year, yeah. a season. I like but yeah, tires. that thing was ridiculous. Yeah. But so that's what happens when AM. That's when Harley Davidson gets involved in something that isn't a big throbbing V twin. Yeah. Do not expect great things. No. Said Eric Buell. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see. I don't think that electric motorcycles are going to be what helps. Harley Davidson. Yeah. No, but but I think that as a company though, as a, any company right now, if you're ignoring yeah. electric motorcycles, you're stupid. Like you should well, yeah. be developing uh, or doing yeah. something with. Or it. if you're advi- uh, ignoring the adventure bike market, which right. maybe yeah. explains oh, some of their yeah. other moves. Absolutely, the adventure. One bike- of the things that I think that Zero maybe should try to do before Harley Davidson mm-hmm. comes out with their electric bike. Yeah. Tattoo coming out. Yes. <laughs> Zero tattoos. <laughs> Come out with a bike that's actually like has painted bodywork, has some sort they of do. art scheme. They do. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, like, okay. Well, yeah, yeah zeros are now painted instead of cast in color, so the finishes do look a lot better. And you better. can have any color you want as long right. as it's white, red, or yellow. No, no, they they do a thing where um, where now you can, well, like 288 bucks. Can I get some sparkly flake with a. It's pretty cool. metallic if you go look at the. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty. I stand they've gotten I better. Seen, I haven't that's, seen that. That's new, John. That's fresh as of like a few months ago. Okay, yeah. Yeah. but you, but I just looking at the artist renderings of some of the stuff that Alta is going to come out with, it's going to kind of look like your traditional motorcycle. It's going to have yeah. a cool color scheme. We it's going to have. We can customize here for you, buddy. I mean, you want yeah. you want a banana yeah, seat well, with sparkles no, I mean, in it? I think it was last week. <laughs> we know a guy who can do glow in the dark. Fucking hook you up. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> I'm just saying it was your right. pain. Yeah. And it doesn't have to look like the future. It can look like right now. And what that's the bikes people right. are buying and right now. Electricity, you know, zero, God love them. We still have a big problem here in the shop where people come in and they're like, Are they ever going to build a metric cruiser? Right. Not that I'm a big fan of that at all, right. but maybe there actually Will is. there be a zero cruiser? I'm surprised. A consumer who wants a big chromed out, looks like one of the chromed alternator off of a Pro Street Chevy. Right. <laughs> electric motor right there with whirly makes a little bit yeah. of noise because it's got some cards in the middle. Oh, exposed oh, belt. You can oh. rev it. Yeah. You know, you can be like, oh, you can see blue sparks. You can see sparks yeah. and stuff. And well, then, like, like when you're I'm, a kid. I'm surprised right now that mm. the that the Harley the artwork for the Harley electric bike doesn't have like the batteries in a V twin. I know. Like right. yeah. I was like, they missed an opportunity right. Right. there. Yeah. Yeah. They could have carried over the whole V twin uh, concept. Let me let me throw this out yeah. to you guys. So. Oh, right now in the adventure scene, a lot of the older guys that probably should have hung it up, or they're going to hang it, going to hang it up because they can't move their feet and arms and stuff, are really digging the DTC, like the, the Africa yeah. Twin DTC uh, yeah. and stuff, because they don't have to shift, right? Well, I'll tell you, man, when I get so when I get so incapacitated, I can no longer move those four digits, <laughs> those two inches, and I have to rely on a DTC. But hey, there better I can, be a hook. Right, but if I can still ride whatever, <laughs> if that's going to motivate me to do it, I'd be excited about it. But here's my yeah. question. So can Harley capitalize on the loyalty of some of the older guys now that are un- incapable of riding their, their shake, their fucking paint shaker? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they going to be able to say, like, 
Well, it's an electric bike, or it's this, oh, yeah. but it's a Harley. It's so a I Harley. can still ride right. it. I can still ride so it. So is that Harley. is that is that an option? Is that I don't have to sand can... off my tattoos. Right, right. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. I mean, is that is trust that... me? It all like, grew together years ago. Some yeah. polished aluminum, a yeah. little bit, maybe some cooler graphics, yeah. or, you know, just something yeah. to make yeah. it look, you know, yeah. more appealing. Yeah. People, I personally love black. My favorite color. Hey, look, Zero has shown very little interest in catering to the aesthetic perversions of the American buyer. They have kept it fucking form does follow function. And they really have. And you can tell that when you look at a zero that no fucks were given towards flamboyance. Just nothing. I mean like and they're not embracing the idea of vapor plated chrome plated plastic. No, but you, you don't know. have to when you have ludicrous gear and you can just hit the gas. Yes, I'm just saying. Yeah. 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 All the bullshit well. stops at 116 foot pounds of torque. <laughs> right. Yeah. And <laughs> so you're like, oh, well, you're right. And I don't have fake chrome on my rims. <laughs> yeah. But America wants a little fake chrome on their rims. I'm just saying. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't it doesn't match match. Should be a tagline in a strip club. We have yeah. fake chrome on yeah. our rims. Johnny Mac wants some Walmart spin a hubcaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Big, and oh, big tits. No. And big tits. And big tits. And big tits never got I around. Want laser the track hologram program. projection. Right. Oh, I would. Oh, oh, so yes. That's yeah. exactly right. The running yes. horse. Is right. like, <laughs> <laughs> and I think. When it comes to looking at that market, it's fucked for them. I feel terrible for them because they have to. They have to. They have to participate in the future. Right. They have to. We all do. We all have to participate in the future. I don't like it. You'll never catch me voluntarily tweeting anything. When I post something to Instagram, it's a side option, and I'll check it. Okay, because that's where I am with the tweet thing. But I'm not. They're going to have to participate in the future. You have to give the customer what they want, whether you like yeah. it or not. Right. And I hate to be that guy, but fuck, man. If I'm Harley Davidson and everything I do is black and orange and America, oh, man, you're... There'll be a screaming, e there'll be a screaming eagle. Yeah. <laughs> Electric Harley. <laughs> They're, they'll do it quick. Scream an electric chicken. <laughs> They're better be electric. They're in You're absolutely right. They will, the year after they, oh, oh God. Man. Oh. Dude, will, it, will it go? <laughs> <laughs> More importantly, though, SNS and all these other companies are already devising electronic noisemakers to put on oh, yeah, the yeah. Dustin was on top of this years yeah, ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Dustin had this all figured out. As a sound engineer, <laughs> yeah. BMW did that with some of their cars. Yeah. yeah. So did Corvette. Yeah. Yeah, well, just make it sound like a turbo, give it a little turbo whine. Mm -hmm. let, let you hear a little bit of the motor, put some veins on something, and let it just make a little I think whine. that if you turn yeah. the throttle past three quarters, it should just say, Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of what I say when I ride an electric. And I, I mean, I, I do have the benefit of letting people test ride electrics. That's part of my job, is I let people go out who have never ridden one before, and they ride them, they come back. And when they ride them, they come back. It's funny. It's it's more reliable than the Malort face. <laughs> <laughs> the expression on somebody's face, helmet when they, or their face when they take their helmet off and they're riding an electric is consistently what the fuck? Like you didn't tell me. I knew it was quick, but you didn't tell me. It's hard to get the helmet off or on the <laughs> smile. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's the best expense. That I'm laughing so We've all hard seen the Malort face. And if you haven't seen the Malort face, make friends with the bartender. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or a whole lot from Chicago. Yeah, you'll be. We you'll, used you'll to drink it in cycle cross because it tasted like the dirt that was already in our face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Malort. Because yeah. these pants won't shit themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Malort. You can totally unfriend somebody in person. <laughs> Malort. Because your dad didn't like you anyway. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. that's funny. Yeah, that's the thing. But I, I, I do hope, looking forward at motorcycles and stuff like that. I think the biggest smiles we got around this table when we talked about the monkey, the monkey bike in the cup. Yeah. yeah. And everybody got had a real strong opinion, and they were mostly positive about the monkey bike in the cup. And I'm like, wow, holy shit, that's the butter zone. So the butter zone is a four thousand dollar bike that reminds us of fun. And whereas 
what people aren't really going ape shit over are twenty five thousand dollar bikes that are sending a, a message out to the planet that this is who I am and this is what I believe in. And uh, it's a it's a very interesting time to walk the watch the people who come through the door well, and see where they're at and where their needs are. And I still, man, I I I, I rode a Kimco Yup, a, a bike that doesn't exist in this country. You know, the world's most Taiwanese copy Good of the Vespa. Yup. 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 Did you ride the Yup? Yup. Yup. Stands for Young Urban Professional. Just like the Kimco huh. Dink, Dink stands for double income, no kids. Because the Taiwanese... <laughs> you got that, huh? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the Taiwanese are never just enough to name a fucking bike. Like, like you know, the GTR 350. That would never fly in Taiwan. No, it's got to be the Grand Dink. The Grand Double Income, no kids. <laughs> yes. yes. Grand. And But to the rest of the world, it's still... Really? The dink. <laughs> but yeah. there, there's definitely something to, like, riding a bike. And I think this is why I'm enjoying my buddy so much. Like, so, when you have a bigger bike that costs a lot of money. Yeah. And you fuck around with it. Yeah. If you make a mistake. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Yes, it is. Right? Yes. When you're on your buddy and right. some kid at Mid-Ohio T-bones you and slams you into the ground. And you, like, pick it up and it's not broken. Right. It costs you nothing. And what happened when you came and complained to me about the kid that cut you in front of you and slammed your bike? He said, shut up and have a beer. That's and right. right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the other thing is you're not allowed to care. No, you're not. Like, yeah. you're just. And that's the, that's kind of freeing. It's like it enables you to really enjoy. So there's a, there's a certain enjoyment that comes with the lower price, smaller yeah. bike mm-hmm. that doesn't yeah. come with these bigger price things. You the know what top I'm of the range, 2000 2006 Vespa is sitting 20 feet behind you right now. Right. And it got double totaled. Double totaled. What did we do? We put fur on it. Yeah. <laughs> and now people touch it. And it's awesome. It's going <laughs> and pet it. Right. And pet it all the time. Oscar and it's a tear. That much fun. Yeah. That's it. And like, that's the idea is like, the, there's something about that sort of. Um, but do you think that the, the industry needs to realize that a little bit again? Well, like, that people, like, really enjoy... There's a lot of threads right now about people discovering scooters again and things yeah. like that. And guys that have Harleys for all these years and they right. can't do it, now they're riding scooters. You know, like, I can't believe how much fun this is compared to my bike. So, like, there, there is a certain freeing and kind of, like... The first really- time somebody traded a Vespa in for... Uh, I'm sorry, the first time somebody traded a Harley Davidson in to me for a scooter... Yeah. It... Took me everything I had not to giggle shit myself and run out of the building laughing. <laughs> okay, I had to maintain composure because I am the, the proprietor of the establishment. Right. But the dude came in and straight up traded me a real Harley Davidson, and not like a you know like a Buell. No, like a real Harley Davidson, right. a real Harley Davidson V twin motorcycle for a Bajaj. Yeah. Bajaj. Oh, oh Bajaj. God, a, ba- a Bajaj even. Dude, he traded me a a. Perfectly laid out 92 Sportster that he'd machined. He's a machinist and he machined tons of custom parts for it and the whole deal. Uh, a 1200, it was an 883 with a 1200 kit put on it. And it was a wonderful <clears throat> bike by any standard. Proper Sportster for a brand new Bajaj. How and much did you owe him at the end of the deal? Nothing. He paid me <laughs> monies. Like it cost him the Sportster and some money to get a Bajaj. Wow. <laughs> And we and we remained friends after the deal. Yeah, he Years smiled, after the he deal. was like, "Holy shit, this is fun!" As he yeah. And he's <laughs> covered in tattoos and you know adornments and you know farkle that all represent the brand. <laughs> he was in the Brotherhood because we don't call that lifestyle. He's anymore. been patched in a few times. Yeah, for hog. <laughs> he's been patched into hog. Yeah, he got his card stamped. Uh, <laughs> Did you get a free coffee every ten times? At least, yeah. 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 But. But yeah, he got a scooter, and I giggled myself furiously that I, I had a Harley. But since then, I've taken nine or ten Harley Davidsons in on trade for scooters. Mm-hmm. And I know why. And it's what you said. Yeah. It's because in a perfect world, I will always have a scooter in my garage. Yep. The, sco- the scooter represents carefree, giggle factor, whatever. I don't need to put all my shit on. Mm-hmm. I'm riding a scooter. I'm going to do a thing. And you're not out to impress anybody on when you're on a scooter. Like exactly, this guy pulled up beside me in a pickup truck one time, and I was on the Rockets, and he was like, "He's like, if you don't know how to ride it, keep it in the garage." I'm like, "We're in Bay Village." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "I'm like, sorry if I'm holding you up on your way to your Hell's Angels meeting in Bay Village." In you Bay know? Village, yeah. yeah. 
right. was pissed off because he was trapped behind me and he couldn't get around. You know, I was like, I was like, whatever, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the best testaments, one of the best testaments from Scripture. You get up and beat him the shit with, beat the shit out of him with your purse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no, with his fanny pack. Mm-hmm. Right. I live in Cleveland Heights. I'm yeah. on the east side. And uh, I go to the wine spot all the time. Right. My wife goes there. And so she rides her Metropolitan, which she got from right. you. Okay. And I ride my buddy right. or whatever. We're always on two wheels right. going there, right? So there was a guy, the owner standing there, and some dude had this, like, I don't know. I don't know if it was a Victory or a Harley. It was just a giant slobby just bike. Big sitting there, whatever, yeah, right? right? And an hour and ten co- minute, or an hour and ten minute conversation stemmed from the fact that I pulled up on my buddy and my wife pulled up on her little Metropolitan. Right. We both loaded a bunch of beer into both things. Yeah. We were going somewhere, and the guy's like, wow, that looks a lot of fun. Like, yeah. what, what do you have to do? How much is insured? I'm like, it's like $9 a year. Yeah, I, I'm It's like blah, sure blah, whatever, free. and yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. If and you're he's over like, 45 you insured. And so I have, I have a 42-liter trunk and the thing, and <laughs> we were picking up a whole, for a whole bunch of people. So I put like two 12-packs in the trunk and the thing, and my wife, he's like, <laughs> Wow, he's like, uh, so that looks pretty easy to ride. I'm like, yeah, it's a hundred, it's awesome. Yeah. And he's like, I always thought these were like the best bar crawl, like I'm drinking kind of things. I'm like, oh no, dude, you need to get a scooter. Like it's yeah. it's beyond. Yeah. And, yeah. and like, but the the crazy part was is this guy was like super Harley guy, fringe vest, everything, the whole nine, right? Yeah. And we had an hour conversation about scooters. Yeah. And I guarantee you that that dude has been on Craigslist. Oh, he's been on <laughs> ever, ever since. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's crazy that people like discount them, like. Once, I think there's a certain age where, like, you're like, uh, unless you're like, unless you're like a punk rock. If you're not fucking careful, though, yeah. in I'm gonna go into Oracle mode. <laughs> <laughs> in 21 months, there's gonna be seven scooters parked in front of Smedley's. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, though. Do you want to live in that world? Well, you know, I don't mind. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm going to say in 21 months, there's going to be seven scooters that aren't ours. Right. Parked in front of Smedley's. Because, like, <laughs> that's the, there is a point. You see, the Harley crowd, we all joke. We were like, the marketing that they did in the 70s. Right. They did in the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. They were marketing to the same asshole. Right. He just bought a different bar, bike. So they've never changed their marketing strategy. The target just got older. Mm-hmm. Well, now you can't retroactively sell somebody a Harley to the grave. Right. So until Harley Davidson does the mm-hmm. F-150 project, but with the Rascal Scooter. <laughs> right? Right. You'd be hovering around yeah. on your Harley. Right. Well, what was the initial Harley strategy? How did they sell to young people in the 70s? And the 60s, actually, 60s. their motorcycles did have a lot of power. Okay. So in the 60s, up until up until Honda beat the British, mm-hmm. up until Honda beat the British, a Harley Davidson Sportster was a sporty motorcycle, and then it quit being mm-hmm. a sporty motorcycle. When and sporty motorcycles actually became sporty because the CB450 right. would just fucking dance around. Rub yeah. its dick yeah. in the dirt. Yeah, and that was the problem. Because <laughs> you know, there was a period of time when your Triumph owner and your Norton owner and your BS owner and your Harley owner all had something to talk mm-hmm. about about whose dick was bigger, and they were measuring it. And that's exactly in inches. what I was just going to say about scooters. Yeah, somebody needs to buy, build a dangerous fucking scooter. Like, yeah, uh, inline three cylinder, liquid cooled. <laughs> well, there's one part right there. But it's only dangerous when the transmission blows up, and that's a Bergman. No. That's not what I'm talking <laughs> It's dangerous to your wallet. I'm talking about a sports scooter. Yeah, yeah. A scooter. scooter. Well, they tried stupid. it with the, the T-Max. So Yamaha tried the T-Max as being a sports scooter. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Even more. What about Honda's... Like, take it to 11. 750cc adventure scooter. The scooter. ADD scooter. Yeah, the yeah. ADD. And people are, that people are loving it. That Everybody that's trying it. Any bike yeah. you line up against. You like, know what? 600 liters. I will still give you way more fear per cc with a 1964 Vespa GS with a Rally 210 motor in it yeah. and this drunk asshole at band camp with a naked girl on the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no, no. You're going to see some wheelies, right? Yeah. You're going to see some wheelies and shit's going to get weird and that Bergman can't do that. Yeah. yeah. And I well, do. you're talking two strokes though. Two strokes are just oh, a different again, animal. Yeah. Oh, yes. So then you have to deal with what a scooter that has the same geometry right. as like a CRF 450. Yeah. What I'm mm-hmm. thinking. Yeah. I, I a single just, cylinder right. liquid cooled that has some brap. Right. And some when brap. you get when, when you brap it, <laughs> it braps, and you're just like. <laughs> and that and that might be it. But I think right now, Steve, 
Steve nailed it. Where he said the reason that this, you know, boy touching, big V twin riding, whatever. <laughs> I don't know where you were. I have no idea what bar you were hanging out at. But but the guy who really <laughs> worships, you know, the big the big thing, when he's like when he's thinking <laughs> about a scooter, he's thinking about a scooter for what? Yeah. Well, convenience. Yep. Yeah. It's the same reason his parents moved to Florida. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's the same reason you can't buy a lot of cars without a manual trans with a manual transmission anymore. We can have Brat with a case of beer under the seat still. This is the thing. I'm saying yeah. right. This is the thing. So yeah. and you pull up to the Harley and you think you're gonna be like fucking scooter, and all of a sudden that fucking scooter's like. I do that now, dude. Well, give me a GTS 300. <laughs> of course you right. <laughs> give me a, give me a modern, brand new out crate and, GTS. Oh, no, you yeah. you hit the yeah, yeah. The GTS is right almost there. You it's put a power, teetering on danger. You put a pipe and a power yeah. commander, and it's almost what I want. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. almost what yeah, I you want. You do a GTS right, you may not survive the incident. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more. You may you may you may ride all the way to the point of impact. Yeah. I want when I go full throttle, yeah. the it starts go skyward. Oh no, that's a GTS. You can and you, you can, can make a Vespa GTS. A do little that bump in the road or something, easy. you're wheeling. No oh, the guys at Scooter West, uh, blatant plug for motorsport <laughs> scooters. Uh, Robot and the cats out there have Robot. put so much energy into just giving you the whole fuck factor out of a 300 cc motor. I want a scooter that needs traction control. Alex's bike. So <laughs> oh, yeah. in in particular. Uh, Alex, Alex's red Vespa. The first time I rode it, and I mean, I put tons of miles on a GTS. And I'm no stranger to like, hello, let's go. But his GTS, that thing is not fucking around. And how's the reliability once you get to that performance? It's a Vespa. So it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to worry about what way you put the wrist pin in or nothing. <laughs> 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 yeah. I got my roller bearing. It's going to be back they together tomorrow afternoon. Ever, they yeah. don't hardly ever jump out. Yeah. <laughs> but and his bike is stylish too. He's got all the cool like uh, see through. Uh, so it accommodates both the speed fear gas holes, but it also accommodates those weird fetishy like Asian people. Who want to have like lit up backlit LED shit and like translucent panels so you can see the motor and the transmission. You can see the little variator changing. So he's doing both sides. He's getting both the the fuck you look at me I'm cool factor, but he's also getting performance that's like, you know, yeah, hundred miles an hour. Yeah, 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 we're there. Make a super mo scooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. GTS 450. Yeah. Well, everybody's been joking for years. So the first time, uh, you see, German publications are funny. They just go from, from zero to whoa fast. So years ago, a magazine called Motoretta in Germany, as soon as they announced like the Vespa GT2, the GTS 250 was fuel injected Vespa, they immediately said, well, how come there's no GTS 500? <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> like, 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 like before the ink was dry. <laughs> right, and they were looking at the Piaggio X9 and the BV500 and the mm -hmm. Aprilia 500, and they were looking at those motors and going, "Well, why can't that be in a Vespa chassis?" And everyone went, "You clearly haven't ridden a GTS 250 yet, <laughs> because, eh, you know, you know, you don't need to actually step on your dick." Right. You just need to know that you can step on your dick, and you won't want to step on your dick anymore. <laughs> Most women don't like when you can step on your dick anyway. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And so nobody's built, nobody's built the GTS 500. Mm -hmm. uh, it just hasn't been built. But with the aftermarket performer parts that are available, and the Germans, you can get to way more power than you need mm -hmm. on a standard GTS platform. And they're fucking reliable. And, you know, that's the thing where... You don't see the Japanese going after a performance scooter market. They just, they don't. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't blame them. 22 million scooters, 22 million bikes in, in India, yeah. and none of them are hot shit performance tuned 45 horsepower Vespas. It's just not. So I do love a clutch, though. I do still love the idea of like, I can drive it normally, but also I'm only 700 RPMs from a bad decision. I, I hate when I ride an automatic bike and there's that one time when I wish it had a clutch. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, fuck, I wanted to be dumb. Like, there's traction control on new Vespas. I'm going to let that settle in. I just said that. I, I want a scooter that needs current traction. It has it. There's the whole row of them out there. They're all, there's a whole row of scooters that have ABS and traction control from the factory. 
And the only time it's really annoying to me is when I have the bike up on center stand and I'm trying to rev it, and it won't let me. That's annoying as fuck. Because you're like, you want it, and it won't let you because the front wheel and the back wheel are going different speeds. Uh, so the traction control is... You can turn it off? Yeah. The ASR button, fortunately. Yeah. But like, once again, the nanny state is ahead of us, not behind us. Yeah. They're saving us from future bad decisions. Meanwhile, I want I want a GTS 300 that has a clutch. Yeah. Like I'm going slightly backwards. Give me a five speed, or at least GTS a paddle speed. shifter and left hand yeah. and left hand <laughs> shift. They tried that with Suzuki. It's right behind you, and it will fail. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just, just so you know, if you're riding a Suzuki Bergman, and your transmission hasn't exploded yet, and you have a Bergman 650, it's going to. Yeah. It's going to. Nice. Well then. Yeah. And the good news is they put it in an easy to get to place. Got all the twin cam. People right. are hating us. Now you're going to have all the Suzuki people <laughs> hating us. Here, fucking torches and pitchforks all around our shop. It's well, I've like, got 93 gajillion miles on my Bergman, and it never failed. It's going to be like four angry people now. <laughs> <laughs> so, keeping with the whole like actual motorcycle podcast situation, all right? Yes. Last we week, me and my family went uh, camping, but I had to run back and forth let the dogs out, so I rode my bike. Okay. That way I could just go back and let the dogs out, go back to camping, whatever. Now we know who let the dogs out. Who let? Yeah, I, I let the dogs out. Yeah, that was it. Yes. So it was nine thirty in the morning. It was on Sunday, and I was leaving Punderson to yeah. go back to Cleveland Heights, and a pickup truck hit a baby deer, coming the opposite direction from me, and sent the baby deer carcass directly into my bike at sixty oh, miles duh. an hour. So. Oh, duh. I was like, <laughs> I like it. it was almost too much to take into what to do, but I just kept the mentality of hit the gas. What did what did did it go? Bam! B. No, it didn't. It just, <laughs> it just didn't. But but there's got to be three more of those. Out there. If, yeah. if I hit the brakes, oh, I wouldn't be here right now. But I stayed on the gas and just launched over this yeah, thing. And thrust, we trust. And thrust, and, we trust. Yeah, so yeah. the whole ride fast yeah. and take chances yep. actually worked. I'm telling you. I, look, here's the thing. Statistics are there to protect you. Yeah. If the majority of people get hurt in this situation, do the opposite of what they would do. Right. Mm -hmm. So when there's a deer in the roadway, punch through it. Yeah. Right? Punch. I'm telling you, what kills you is doing doing what everyone does. Well, yeah. the, an the antlers, too. The antlers, too. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. They just kill you a little bit. Yeah. I, always, I, I hit could. a deer on my scooter years and years and years ago. And fortunately, I only hit its testicles. Well... Technically, it's loin. <laughs> and I was on a best, I was on an old shifter scooter. I was on a P200. He tenderized that loin. Oh, and <laughs> I saw the deer next to me for like, I'm going to say three sproings. So I saw it sproing, sproing, sproing. And at you which point I looked you. at the deer, and the deer was like, it had le has left blinker on. <laughs> and it had a left blinker on the antler and I was like oh shit he wants my lane because he went from the right side of the road to the left side of the road in one sprint he's merging and I just ducked uh -huh. and I ducked and pinned it and I hit the top of my head you know it's a scooter why, why would you be wearing a helmet <laughs> did he teabag you he did <laughs> <laughs> he teabagged me <laughs> but I hit the top of my head something hit the top of my head teabag and it didn't affect him a whole lot, except I could just see well, him looking over his shoulder, him, going, oh. his shoulder going, thanks, pal. <laughs> so, yeah, but it was like, that's I'd the like only deer. Out. I'd like dinner next time. First. Right, yeah. <laughs> but he cleared me. Yeah. I mean, he cleared me. And I know, had I done what anybody else would do, which is like grab a fistful of brakes, Right. Yeah. Well, my brain was thinking, and that meant that vintage Vespas don't have front brakes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Those are a suggestion. That's not even right. an option. Yeah. And so I would have done what? I would have, I would have stiffened my arms up. I would have and stiffened my elbows up. My up. head would have been up. Yeah. And instead of getting the smell of his dick, I would have got every <laughs> bit of the side of him. Or his like big sharp hoofy right. things would have stabbed me, right? Well, that's what happened. I got to the stoplight yeah. and I had so roasted you go on a date later? deer on my my. <laughs> no, my, I clean my drawers. I literally <laughs> had like blood and like this. My 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 down tubes are still stained. Like right now, like there's down like, tubes. Dude, I, I no the truck mauled the dude and it shot this body into me. It at 60 squirted miles. a corpse. So let me put it this way: that guy was going sixty and I was yeah. going sixty. He was in the opposite direction. Right. He hit the deer and, yeah. and sent it at me in right. my lane. So I mean, that at about twenty five. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm doing yeah. sixty. It's coming twenty five. Yeah. So yeah. that's like a ninety mile an hour no, carcass yes. underneath yeah. me. Yeah. And it, honestly, like 
I'm really happy that I didn't think enough to do anything. Right. I just hit the gas. You just hit the gas. Yep. And I jumped about a foot and a half in the air. I literally (laughs) came down on the back wheel and front wheel and was like, holy fuck, what the hell just happened? And then I smelled cooking stuff. Right. And that's that's important what you said, too, that because you left (laughs) the ground, you were straight up in... You were square to the road. Right. Had you swerved yeah. and that thing hit you, yeah. you're going down. Yeah, no, I didn't even have a chance to do yeah. too much. But I also, I saw it coming and I didn't do anything. Right. Like, I was like, I'm not, like, I consciously didn't do anything. Well, you're you playing know? Russian roulette. You go left, you, you might hit it, you'll yeah, go right. right. You, you're trying to calculate the trajectory right. of this deer. Yeah. You can't do anything. That's all you can do. But I can say, though, that the best thing to do is just stay on the gas and don't do anything. Unless you're like heading toward a truck or something, but if something's coming, something like that's coming at you. I mean, obviously, like it worked. I mean, we had a few bikes that come into the shop where they would clearly been in a crash, but I respect the driver so much because those forks were folded in at zero degrees. I mean, they were perfectly fucking straight. Yeah. So aside from a slightly shortened wheelbase, <laughs> <laughs> the bravery yeah. of the operator <laughs> is like. Right out. Well, you well, well done, you sir. Did well. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? When you do that, there's a lot less shit to replace. Right. You know, mm-hmm. you're, you're just bearings and forks. You're good to go. Yeah. But otherwise, when it gets crooked, then the whole frame twists mm-hmm. and everything else. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you get when you end up after a crash and you just have a slightly shortened wheelbase, where you're like you're riding like the chopper version of whatever it is you used to ride, <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, that's a good one. You got away from that one. You can ride those home. Yeah. No, but the ones that are damage. twisted, you don't ride those home. Mm-hmm. No, you don't ride those home at all. Yeah, I I gotta say I totally agree. Like, if you're gonna go, I've been in a few, and I never let go of the brake lever. Mm. I mean, I never let go of the. I crush the shit out of the brakes, and I want to have just black stripes all the way to the point of impact. I mean, I want everyone to know I was working at it, mm. and I've never thrown one away. And I've gone over a hand. I mean, I've gone over the hood of a car, and I've gone you know gone over the hood of a car and rolled, and got up. And, and cursed. <laughs> but I was cool. Right. Rather than feeding it in a little bit at an angle or going down, eh, I don't like that idea. Mm. I, I wanna... One guy I talked to, he was, him and his wife on a bike, like, yeah. car, driveway, back yeah. road, whatever, poof, right out in front of him. Straight yeah. T bone. Yeah. He said that his gas tank yeah. was press fit to the frame. Yeah. Because he was gripping the bike. At the time it happened, all he could do was be like, fuck. And he fought it. And the whole gas tank was just crushed to the frame. I mean, he went through the gas tank. Him and his wife both. He broke both legs, went through the handlebars, went over the... They managed to go over the car and topple down the other side. Tends to be what happens. Both of them were severely injured, but... He's, it was alive. A, he's alive. Dead he's alive. on hit. Did his... the gas tank have his junk in <laughs> 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 an extra little dip? Right. <laughs> an, <laughs> an extra dent right in the middle of the <laughs> tank. Yeah. Yeah. Streak. Right side of the dent, a little bigger than the left side of the dent. But he yeah. said, if you look there, at that there's tank. There's a Prius like out there with a, a super taint mark oh, yeah. having at this point. <laughs> <if you're laughs> <running back> to... <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, oh boy, God. I, I'm, I hope I'm done crashing. I do. God, I hope I'm done crashing. I know I'm not, but I hope I'm done crashing. I've had enough. I mean, I think, I think everybody sitting around the table is probably going, "Have I had enough crashes yet?" Well, what was it oh, like man. in your sport bike days? I mean, you were a stunt rider at one point. I I hurt myself a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Let me put it this way. I wasn't. You're no stranger to fall. No, but I wasn't good either. Like I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> like there are guys that are a lot better than me, and, and <laughs> I was the comic relief. What I laughed. But I lacked in skill. I made up for in failure. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And enthusiasm. My worst. It was like those guys in the purple helmets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> At Isle of Man. My, my worst. My worst was we had a whole pack when we did the Rider for Life barbecue. We had a whole pack of people get together. We had like four hundred fifty bikes. We went downtown, took it over, did all this stuff. We we're coming down too, and I got all. I got all excited, and I went to do a stop at about 105 miles an hour. jeez. Oh, and I had my Scott steering dampener, and always did the same thing. I always went up, feathered it, whatever. And I, I feathered it, went up, and that's all I remember. Everything went off. I hit, broke both this collarbone, that collarbone, and something else, and skidded. I remember, like, sliding down the highway with, like, the headlights going like this. Like, you could see the bike spinning. But we always had a pickup truck that followed us. So basically what happened is I got thrown in the truck, my bike got thrown in the truck, and then they drove away. But I spent, I don't know, a month and a half or so with my all my stuff all broken and everything. And I was like, I don't ever want to have either wheel off the ground anymore for the rest of my life. But yeah, no, I was I was never good at it. I was always trying to do all the fun stuff, but 
Everybody else was way better than I was. And it's I just, a very <laughs> steep learning curve. You I only through, have one chance to pop a wheelie, jump up on the handlebars, because that's it. Well, and the replacement parts. I went through nine so 900 expensive. RRs. Nine of them. Nine. Wow. And I'd buy them for 2500 bucks. The guy would be like, oh, blown transmission. I'm like, well, this bike that's completely crashed is a great transmission, so I take that and put it in this and do whatever. And so I just, I, yeah, it was yeah, not a good And then they were like, well, the stolen parts are cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> so then you couldn't own a sport bike in Cleveland. That's when you're, no, you had your shop. You had now. your shop on 25th, yeah. right? Is that when that was? Yeah. yeah. Right We'd go, and I'd be jealous because yeah. you guys were racing scooters on the mm -hmm. go kart tracks, and I was killing myself on highways. So yeah. I'm like, this seems like a better option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I spent 65 bucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Go out, race with 10 or 12 right. of my friends. Have a great time. Come back with like a seven dollar trophy. But you have to admit, back then though, <laughs> at least sixty five dollars worth of parts. But see, but back then the market was so crazy because like I would wreck a nine hundred yeah. RR and I'd buy one for fifteen hundred bucks, but it was a six speed. But the one I bought only had five speeds. Right. Like it'd be really weird. It would be like a ninety seven motor and a ninety three frame, and it'd be the like, oh. market back then. Oh, it was crazy. I like the I love the way you use the term the market. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was a market for some of you guys. For most people, it was an insurance claim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else was like, "So that's the shadow where your bike used to be parked." Yeah, yeah it was. So speaking yeah. of that, at the same time, do you remember the Puerto Rican drag races that used to happen down there? There were times back in like in in ninety seven, ninety eight. Where there would be nurses going to the Cleveland Clinic, and they'd park their Integra GS or whatever, and they come out after their shift, and their car would be there, and they'd go to start it, and be like, nothing. They'd open the hood, and the whole motor was gone because they took the 1.8 oh, liter motor yeah. and just pulled it. And then oh. there'd be a CRX the you next week at the street drive with that motor in it. Like yeah. an Integra? <laughs> Period. You own an Acura? <laughs> <laughs> Your motor's stolen. Your motor's gone. Those guys could get a motor out in about 45 minutes. 40, oh, easily. Yeah, it was easily. hilarious. But. And it was either the guys that were running those or it was the RX-7s yeah. that were spinning 22,000 RPMs with, mm -hmm. like, turbochargers yeah. and blowers. And it was well, insane. I mean, that was that idea. It was like, you only had it until somebody else wanted it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. When somebody else wanted it more than you had it, and that's when, eh, insurance. But people don't know this about Cleveland. Cleveland had a really cool street racing scene and stunt scene, all kinds of stuff back in the day. It was pretty interesting. Right? Yes, it did. Yeah. Until Cleveland and Akron, yeah. slightly distant suburb, got arrested yeah. for having warehouses full of stolen motorcycles. <laughs> well, yeah, well, those are, right. yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's why nobody's allowed to have dirt bikes anymore. No. Do you know why? Because people in the city like to do wheelies, and it's easier on a dirt bike with no title. Right. Yeah. But they're going to build the dirt bike. Or track, headlight. Or... Sell all of them. <laughs> uh, just so you know, we were down the other day, we were doing some riding around on Sunday. We were having a good time. Just cruising around, and we saw that the Muni lot, the one of those many Muni, Muni municipal lots along the shoreway, had been taken over by D Wild Stuntas. Rye does for life. Uh, I'm sorry, Rye Lots of does. Z's. Rye does fear life. Yeah. Uh, they have taken it over with uh, the quads. Oh, yeah. And the uh, aforementioned stolen dirt bikes, mm -hmm. and now in broad daylight in a you know, nine hundred yard parking lot, they're doing uh, wheelies and, and whatnot, and got cones set up, and they're doing it in a nice, controlled, safe okay. manner. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, with the city's approval too. No police to be seen. Not yeah. one. Not yeah. one police car there. Yet they're like a quarter mile from the police stables right there. Oh no, 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 no. they can smell bur they can smell horse shit from where they're. Yeah. Doing but the bikes, crazy but part is, if they went there and asked anybody for a title to any of those bikes, well, well the bikes don't have titles to begin with; they're dirt bikes. Okay, uh, that's why they're not riding CBRs anymore because CBRs all had titles, right? Whereas dirt bikes didn't, right? And if you want to know why the dirt bike wheelie thing, twelve o'clock boys, whatever you want to call it, has gotten so popular, it's it's really <clears throat> fucking hard. To prosecute on a vehicle that didn't have a title when it came from the factory. No, you're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. MSOs don't make a difference. MSOs don't mean shit. Nope. Yeah, and, I mean, and that's why if you own a dirt bike and you don't and you do want to keep it around, go get an OHV title, like get a FOUO. It's for off-road use only. So your state, pretty much all states, have an FOUO title, and that means for off-road use only. People, well, I don't want to get that title, of brand. No, fuck you, get that title, because at least then you own it. Protects you. You, you can show that you own it. The VIN that the factory went to the trouble of staffing, stamping in the fucking frame right. is worth something. Yeah. Because otherwise, I know guys that have lost five-year-old KTMs, and they can't, they'll yeah. never see their bike again. Right. 
Because they didn't even have an FOU. They didn't even have a fucking off-road title for their bike. If they go to run that VIN, it's in the system. If they don't, don't. If you didn't do it, it's not in the system. And Cleveland picks up. I was at the the number three impound lot the other day, and there's probably 150 dirt bikes in there. Mm. Oh, last time they had the photos posted for the auction, it was all just crashed dirt bikes and quads. Yeah, yeah. 150 dirt bikes in a row, all sitting there handlebar to handlebar. I saw every kind of dirt bike. Right. And you know, here's what I'm... The guy that they took it from didn't just come back from the Yamaha dealer with that seven thousand dollar, you know, four twenty six or whatever. You know, yeah. like these are all stolen bikes. Yeah, this is it. And even and if you bought it for five hundred bucks, ever. you're not getting your money's worth. If it was your yeah. bike, you would have paid the three four hundred bucks to get it back. You can't. Why not? You can't prove you own it. Time. Yeah. 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 yeah, unless you get a yeah. If you don't have a for off road use title on your dirt bike, and it gets stolen. And you have a picture of your dad's beaver shot on the gas tank. <laughs> okay? And you can identify your dad's beaver shot on the dash tank, the gas tank. Because you have a picture of your dad. And you go down to the impound lot and say, that is mine. It was stolen three weeks ago from my garage. And next to it is my mom's side by side and my dad's razor and my uncle jimmy's gator and they're all right there so clearly this criminal has been arrested and all of my former property is right there if you don't have a title you don't own it and all that shit will be sold at auction not a bill of sale not a bill of sale yeah and that's why ohio does off-road the funny thing is when they sell it at auction they'll probably give you a title that's the golden thing is i have bought many things at auction in other states and said i'm sorry in my state it's illegal to sell me a bike without an auction you have to give her a bike without a title you have to give me a title and people have given me titles for shit i know i couldn't get titled in my own goddamn state (laughs) it's cheaper for me to get the shit impounded in chicago buy it from the chicago with a title (laughs) auction they'll give me a title here i can't get a title so yeah, I thought that might be a way to get titles for bikes. You know what I mean? Get an off-road title for a bike mm-hmm. first. Yep. yep. Then put lights and turn signals, and then go back and try to get an on-road title for it. The inspection process is different in every state. Ohio's particularly tough, but but it, at least you have a title. Or get a salvage title first. Yeah. Apply yeah. for a salvage title for a bike, and that's the and toughest then turn thing. Around is and get that made into if a you own anything resembling a dirt bike or anything, you know, goddamn man, people, look, you listen to my podcast. We're all idiots around here sitting at the table. Vermont. Vermont. But I heard that's not working anymore. I heard that many states are not doing the Vermont thing. So like, even if you have a Vermont title, they won't transfer it over. You know what? That's, now a it's Vermont, being well known. A green license plate every two years is better than a dick in the ass. Yeah. Oof. No cops ever pulled me over because I have a green license plate on the back of my old Honda. Yeah. And about a month ago, I did get my Vermont tra- uh, title. Our plate turned into an Ohio. See? Okay. All by myself. Yeah. <laughs> All by myself. <laughs> I got a question. Because um, yeah. I did the Vermont thing for yeah. my XS400, but I switched it to a New York plate. Mm-hmm. Um, you can keep the Vermont plate. What do you do for inspection? We don't have inspection. There's no. no In our state, we don't. New York. Well, comes. when a vehicle comes, when a motorcycle comes into the state, you from have out to of have state. an out of state, from out of state, yeah. Out of state vehicle inspection. From, you have to have an out of state yeah. inspection, which is right. a piece of paper from Any dealer. many dealers, yeah. Yeah. That's just it's literally they go out and look at the t- they look at the or yeah. if it's the winner and you do the DMV route, yeah. the girl at the DMV counter when I brought my husky in from uh, uh, Michigan or no uh, Washington DC, yeah. she was like, that looks like a yellow motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because <laughs> it was too cold for her to go out. Like, oh, actually, check. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> well, I so, got my bike in New York. Yeah. And I went through on, I did it by phone with an inmate in Vermont because they have inmates handling their DMV calls. <laughs> yes! Oh, well, really? well, well no, it's, it's actually really cool. You, uh, you call, I called because I didn't know. I may call this. them now just for entertainment. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's very, it's very, uh, so, uh, it's a, they make a great distinction on the automated thing. They say, if you would like general information question and do not have a problem, they don't say it that way. Right, right. Speaking to an inmate. So I talked to this inmate. He was the nicest guy, and he just was very yes or no. Like he, Fucking surf he knew, smuggler. He, he, knew his, <laughs> he knew what was going down, and he didn't try to get any. They basically tell you don't, you do not have to give them any information or anything right. like that. So yeah. he had told me about yeah. it. 
but then I did it by mail and got oh, that's, the plane. Oh, that worked great. Yeah, so I had the bike in New York. It was never a Vermont bike. Right. right. So there was just no title with it because the right. guy had, didn't have it. Yeah. Um, but I was, I went So you were able to successfully transform a Vermont document and green plate into a New York document and... I had a New York bike. Yeah. I looked it up on some database. It said right. there's no shenanigans that right. happen with this bike. Vermont does that too. Yes, yeah. and they checked it too. I got yeah. I through mail. I got a Vermont title, Vermont plate, and then I transferred it all to New York State, right. which cost me some extra money. Mm -hmm. But it was better than doing the whole bond title or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I was successful, yeah. and um, but I the reason why I would have kept the Vermont plate, but I didn't know how to do the inspection. But New York has state. They have state inspections, mm -hmm. but the green plate means you don't live in New York. Right. It means but, you have a house in Vermont. But I don't have any inspection sticker on it. Either. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, no, nobody, in the, nobody in the land of Ohio knows what an inspection yeah. sticker looks like. Yeah. But, but yeah. Phil, you've obviously done, like, you've bought bikes without titles before. Yes. So how, okay, so, like, you're on Craigslist. You find yeah. you find a CB350 yeah. Scrambler, yeah. mint condition, guys, like, 700 bucks today, my wife's having a baby, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You, you buy can't. it, no title. How hard is it to get a title for that bike? Really fucking hard. Like almost goddamn impossible. It's not okay, so let's go back and let's 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 quantify some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> goddamn paper bag. Alright, go ahead. It's not stolen. You can look up Doesn't the matter. VIN number, it's Doesn't not matter. stolen. Okay? Here's what I'm gonna tell you. In a lot of states, if you don't have a title, you don't get a title, and that's just gonna be the end of the conversation. That's it. And honestly, without Vermont, even when a mechanic lean, when you have a legitimate excuse why you need a title, yep. because some bonehead you put <clears throat> fucking two thousand dollars worth of work into his piece of shit nine hundred fifty dollar bike, and he's not going to pay you. So you are justifiably taking on ethically right. R divine right of it's here. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter, and that's why we say Vermont. But what's the point of that? Like, what what is what is the like say the Ohio DMV or something? Yeah. What do they what do they gain from not letting people access? Titles I've said it a vehicles? million times. Why not let people get a title? Why not let them register it? Then the name of the person who has this VIN number is now in the system. Right. And if somebody comes back and wants to check, double check, like it, it just constantly cross check that against the stolen vehicle mm -hmm. list. Right. And you would know that you have the, the charter. Bike. The charter. And I'm not, man, I'm, if you've known me for longer than 93 minutes, you've heard me say this before. In our state, the charter of the state says that the Title Bureau is there to ensure the titling of vehicles mm -hmm. to their owners and to create the title of vehicles to their owners so that a chain of custody can be maintained in the state of Ohio for property owned by people. Mm -hmm. So the state charter says that your, um, the state charter says that these certain officials at the title bureau are supposed to do a certain thing. Right. But here's what I'm going to tell you. When you've got a job that is five days a week, from 0800 to 1700 hours, it's eight to five for Americans, with an hour off for lunch and medical benefits, and the it's whole my job. Yep. Are you going to risk losing that, losing that fucking job, or when in doubt, don't? And their whole policy <clears throat> is when in doubt don't. Hmm. And even when I hand you your own big blue book of 720 fucking pages, 12 by 18 inches, oversized in giant print for the heart of reading, and I show that to you and it says that in Vermont there is no title that a transferable ownership is issued on motorcycles over 15 years of age. And it says that based on the law of Vermont that's in the book that you use as the fucking Bible, you need to give me a title if I present you with a transferable ownership mm. and a bill of sale that doesn't even require a notary in Vermont. That you, state of Ohio title employee for your county are supposed to give me a title 99.9% .9 of the time you will say no because when in doubt don't it is better to say no and make my butt exactly nine millimeters bigger <laughs> than it is to say yes 
and make a mistake and lose the cushiest job you're ever going to have in your non-GED having life. Right. Okay? Right. And I take that back. Probably your art degree having life. Right. right. Okay? <laughs> so you did eventually get a title. Yeah. Nick. It was a massive pain in the ass. Um, and that was with a Vermont. Right, right. I It took going to three or four different DMVs. And, 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 and your, was your tactic that we're going to go to less teeth and then less teeth and then less teeth DMVs? Oh, my he's tactic, sitting there going, maybe I should have tried that. Yeah. Well, well, no, no. I First, I went to the one closest to my house in Akron, right. and uh, they said no. They gave me some bullshit. Oh, you need a bill of sale at least. And it's like, no. I um, assure you, you were right. 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 Um, and I did a lot of research. I, I know I was right. Um, then I, I went to a couple others in the area, and uh, at one, I actually got the... They, they said no, but then some lady in the back was like, no, actually, he's right, and but they still didn't. Oh, oh fuck! Yeah, it was like... Oh, so it was crazy. <laughs> he's right, but fuck him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! He's still, Shut right up. Here. He's still here! <laughs> so, so, then, so then I was like, okay, I'm going to go to... I went down to North... My parents live in North Canton, right. and I, I've been to that DMV many times, and it's very nice yeah. uh so I, I i went there and i was like okay maybe they'll listen to me they seem better i don't right. know yeah. um so I, I went there and it was still like pulling teeth but eventually they did give me an ohio plate <gasps> and a title so what you're saying is when you go to these places you want to show up with a box of donuts i did that iced tea and say ladies <laughs> i just want to bring this to you or men or whoever's yeah. working and and just blow well, them up or what? Really, They're really, like, what it came oh, down this to. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> really, don't be too slick. Trust me. Right. What what it, what it came down to was not giving them too much information. Right. Uh, if you give them just something that they can grab onto and have doubt on, they'll take it and run. Yeah. Um, so you you give them the bare minimum information. Um, I, I, I did go with the story that I was a student in Vermont and I bought this thing yep. two years ago. And right. I guess, you have, yeah, that's what you kind of have to explain is how you have an Ohio right. driver's right. license, exactly. yeah. but a vehicle registered in Vermont. Right. My They're, Vermont registration says Phil Waters at 112 Herman. They don't require residency. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They don't require residency. And that's the whole thing about it is like, so there's, and this is what's hilarious, is it has your name and your address, not in Vermont. On a document yeah. that says it's a title, well, in lieu of a title, in Vermont, mm -hmm. and now you're going to the title bureau saying, I need to make this thing that I did totally legally in Vermont. They've done a VIN check already. They've checked it for stolen. They've checked it for wants and warrants and liens. Vermont does a remarkable amount of work just so they can have your 75 bucks. And don't say your vehicle was less than 500 and save you some time. If it was less than 500, don't bother. Because they want the big lie. Say it's over five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. If your bike is literally, if your bike is legit two hundred fifty bucks, fuck it. Lie. Say it's five hundred bucks. Go to KBB retail, whatever. They're going to ask you for NADA or KBB numbers, but don't let, don't put on two hundred seventy five dollars. I did run into that actually yeah. uh, because they that was one more letter that I had to, yeah. to one more back and forth um, that would have been smoother. If I... Yeah, your dollar amount was too low. Yep. Yeah, yep. your dollar amount was too low. It threw the threw the system off. But they do. Vermont's willing to be your huckleberry, but they want to get a little something. something. Nick, was this for your Vespa? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I actually did both of the Vespas yeah. and a Honda XR200, which was never street legal to begin with. No. So. Uh, which is so, fantastic. Yep. Which is hilarious because his Vespa is fucking gorgeous. And so you're like, you're like, yeah, what's the market value? $700. And they're like, you probably tried to say it was two fifty, did didn't you? I probably did, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. Like, oh, man. But, so, but that's that, I mean, that's kind of that thing. So if you do, if you do find yourself in a wonky title situation, just know it's not going to be easy. I wonder if I could do that with my Vespa. I previously, but now it's expired. Like two yeah. years ago, it was registered as a moped. Yes. Nah. So are they going to see that when I come back? Man, nah. you know what? Hell, fuck it. Re-registered as a moped. I took it up to our cabin in Vermont. And yeah. That's where it's been living. Well, mm -hmm. all I know is apparently a lot of sketchy motorcycle motherfuckers spend a lot of sketchy time in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me, check the pedals off your moped. Now yeah. you can't call it a moped anymore. When you go to a big ass scooter, uh, it's, it's remarkable how many green lights. I'm going to tell them that I want to yeah, get a, right. I wanted to get a regular plate for it. 
Well, that, that was, I want it because you can't get a vintage moped, moped light. light. No, you can't. No. Well. no, you can't. But now you can get vin you can get vanity vintage plates. So really? I have historical plates that are there. But the problem is, like historical was like one price for fifty years. Yep. Yeah. Now you got to pay the yearly fee. Yeah. Now you got to pay. Yeah. You're getting rid of the one superpower that vintage had was. Yeah, that was so something funny that I I forgot yeah. to mention down at mid as I ever heard someone saying that something yeah. about. See, see all these green plates? Yeah. Here? There's a lot of motherfuckers from Vermont here. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. Vermont's showing really strong here. Yeah. We should have a Vermont motorcycle club. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Anywhere but Vermont. We have like rock and green patches on the back of our jackets. Vermont yeah. rocks. Vermont there's rocks. like, there's like 975 bureau chiefs, but none of them actually reside in no. Vermont. <laughs> no, 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 no. Never been to Vermont. <laughs> right. Couldn't find it on a fucking map. The, the green yeah. platers. The green players, yeah, the Vermont, the Vermont motorcycle gang. That's not a bad idea. We're all like rocking for vintage bikes with green plates on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that, and that's what I do. Sometimes when I sell people a, a vintage motorcycle, I'm like, look, it's going to come to you with a Vermont transferable registration. It's going to have a license plate on the back of it that is valid, and it's going to have a, a transferable registration. Now, how you turn that into the title of your state or choice is entirely up to you. But right now, it's legally registered and documented. I can ride it legally. Now, what you do and how you make that shit work, that's between you, a box of donuts, and the lady at the title bureau. <laughs> I'm not getting involved. And that's it. And I've had people that I've sold. I sold that vintage Triumph. You guys might remember. I had this beautiful T100. And I sold it to a cat in, like, you know, Nevada or Utah or something. And he couldn't manifest the title off my Vermont document. And he tried, he tried, and he, he wanted his money back. Like, he wanted me to pay him the money back and ship the bike all the way back from, you know, outer Sandistan back to Cleveland. And I was like, no, dude, you're not trying hard enough. Like, if you want to own a vintage motorcycle, you got to act like it. That's the thing. If you want to get into that, you got to be ready to enter. Like, yeah. It's, it's not just like, oh, I own the he bike. He didn't stop at one try. Right, right, Fuck right. No. No, I, I will he didn't say, stop at one success. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, if I ever get around to fixing up that other Vespa, I yeah. probably won't even bother. I'll probably just renew the Vermont registration. Right. It was yeah. such a pain in the ass. Right. Well, if and you, you have, can renew those Vermont registrations yeah. forever. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. you have if you have a Vespa or multiple Vespas. All you need is the Cleveland Moto uh, <laughs> yeah. little easy yeah. turn yeah. thing. You only need one plate. There's not yeah. one cop around here that's going to be like, yeah. hey, that's not the Vespa that I can assure you, in the came of, up with. In yeah. the state of Ohio, <laughs> no cop ever wants to be. Uh, yeah, base, I'll be out with the uh, 72 Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to call in that you're pulling over a 74 Vespa. <laughs> like, nobody, no. Dispatch will never let you live that down. Like, like oh, really? 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 Are you sure you're okay out there? Should we send you back up? Yeah. You're out there with Mr. Bean and her. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. What was the guy, the news guy from uh, WKRP? Herb, oh, Herb. Now, Herb Charlick was the sales guy. He, he, uh, oh, Les Nesman. Les Nesman. Les Nesman. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Bean and Les Nesman. Uh, like, like seriously, nobody of any sort of intimidation has ever rocked a Vespa except for Deadpool. Yeah, I was just about to say Deadpool. I was thinking that was just like a one slight marketing opportunity. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. like that was like the world's fastest quarter of a million dollar product placement. Yeah, <laughs> stole the Vespa, crashed the Vespa. Yeah, in about nine seconds. But Deadpool rode a Vespa. So that's cool. The uh, and we got anything else? We said DGR. Okay, September thirtieth. Distinguished gentleman's ride. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to donate, but you do have to register. Hey Phil, I was on the website and I can't see you listening for the Cleveland ride. No shit. Did you register? Well, no. I don't want to give any money. I just want to ride. Fuck you, dude. Register. You don't have to give any money. Registration is free. And then it'll list the Cleveland ride. It'll list the details and everything else. But they're not going to give out the details to every Tom, Dick, and blowjob that wants to participate in a fucking ride. Because we don't want 9,000 assholes showing up who have no business doing what we're doing. So this is like the little tiny gatekeeper thing that you got to do. So go to Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. I think it's gentlemansride.com. Go there. Register. 
find out if there's a ride happening in your, like, I don't know, neck of the fucking swamp where you live. And if there isn't, create one. Uh, because the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride is very cool. Like, it's a good time to meet other people from your area. Rochester has one. I know they do. Uh, Chicago has one. Cleveland has one, strangely enough. And we've been doing it since the beginning. Um, our ride, if you are within... If you can swing a dead beaver and throw it, you might be able to participate in the Cleveland ride. Um, John and I pre-routed that fucker. And I got a notice back from the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride saying our ride was too long. <laughs> it wasn't even 50 miles. How many they miles want the ride to be between 15 and 45 minutes. Uh, uh, how long? We Cleveland mowed the shit out of that 15. thing. 15 and 45 15. minutes. Oh that's not even a ride. I know. That's, that's what you do on the way to a ride. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, um, for the record, if you are looking at the Cleveland Distinguished Gentleman's Ride, Everything that happens after the sip and post is on you. Is optional. Yeah. <laughs> For the yeah. record, I won't be there. <laughs> it's not a loop. Right. It's not a loop. No, it is a it is literally a one way route. It's forty five or fifty miles, give or take. Hmm. And uh, I worked it back out so we could do that steep road. That's right by our house. Old Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> it is right by I'll just go home. You just go straight home. Old, yeah. um, literally Bennett Road's right around Bennett, the corner. Yeah, it's right around the corner from where you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can go straight is... home. Uh, Wallings in yeah. state? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, close enough. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well, your son's been to the sipping post. I was raised to riding the CT90. Yeah. 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 He's figured out how to get to the sipping post uh, by backyards. <laughs> the, uh, well, I but, guess yeah. we could serve you. You Mom. rode your motorcycle. You rode your motorcycle. <laughs> 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 and apparently you're a veteran. <laughs> Based on your fake ID. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Luke. I'll trade you a legit license plate for that bike for one Xbox. Oh, wow. Ooh. Jesus. <laughs> if you just said a wee, a vintage plate that's good position. forever. It, it is forever. Yeah. yeah. I get a pile of those. But So our DGR in Cleveland, uh, we decided to push it back because last year we started way too early. Uh, we're going to meet at the crack of 11 this time. Ooh. Because mm. 10 o'clock wow. was too ambitious. <laughs> uh, Porco will be feeding us again. Yeah. Yay, Porco. Porco. And then we're leaving at the crack of noon, because we're going to do that better this year. And then uh, we're going to ride as twisty of a road as we can give you between Porco and the Sippin' Post. And uh, we're going to make a brief uh, comfort stop at the county line. So we're going to stop. stop at the county line bar so and people can uh, cross-level and adjust their fluids. <laughs> And uh, once you've cross-leveled and adjusted your fluids at the county line, then we're going to head off to uh, some more twisty roads and fun stuff, and we're going to have sip and post. And then once we get to the sip and post, uh, if we're too much for them, they have a basement. And there's an overflow bar right around there. There's an overflow bar next door. Yeah. Right. So we have two bars within 97 feet of each other. <laughs> Perfect for us. And then once we leave there, it's going to be... Uh, Town Tavern. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know it. They have plenty of parking lot. I like that enough, one better. Not enough bar. Yeah. Well, yeah. The VIP, VIP crew line. might go to the town tap. Right. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. VIP, the VIP crew might, I went to might school, be next I went to school with Jen, too. They're on the place. So. Well, there oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, John we weren't buddies, but I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I have her phone number. Yeah. John's on her phone number. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of that deal. And uh, so then uh, when we get done, there's going to be an organized ride that is going to go left and go through the metro parks through the Rocky River Reservation, mm -hmm. back up to Porco the Long Way. Right. Oh, nice. Be, oh, it's going to be like an extra hour and a half. Oh, hell yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah. Then there's going to be the light speed ride that goes <laughs> from the Sippin' Post at light speed on Route 77. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go Pearl to 77. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go pretty much 42 to 77. How fast uh, can I get to Porco and get a fantastic said, drink? There's a term that we used to have called the Porco Challenge. <laughs> yeah, this may be a new one. Uh, but anything that happens after the sifting post, um, that's on you. Uh, we're going to work with uh, the guys from our local brand new Triumph dealership. Sweet. And they're going to uh, provide us with a chase vehicle. Oh, nice. Nice. So Ooh. if your shit's in the wind. Well, then. Yeah. 
Yeah. That gives me the peace of mind because my shit's gonna break. It'd <laughs> <laughs> be Gorby driving it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gorby. Oh, yeah. oh, hey man. Oh, John, that sucks. You broke down, dude. Come on, here. Let's get you. We'll get you taken care of. We'll get you taken care of. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, so that's Can what we're looking at. Can you give me a PBR at. too? Sure, no problem. No <laughs> problem. The, uh, that's fine. So our uh, our distinguished gentleman's right. I'm very. I'm I'm kind of quietly proud to say we've had a solid DGR. Like, our DGRs have been solid from the get-go. Uh, and if you're not, like, if you're from somewhere that when you fall asleep, asleep at night, you can think about Cleveland, it's not the worst idea to come here on September 30th. Well, we're going to show you a good DGR. All we can promise you is that we start at Porco and we end at Porco. You might not even have to leave if you really don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking pro move right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, just grow up. <laughs> just move your bike. Yeah, that is the pro move. To a better spot. Yeah, yeah. just, put, yeah. just yeah. put your bike in a different spot. We're going to start spot. at Porco. We're going to end at Porco. And there will be two other stops oh, in between. Man. That both happen to also be bars. Yeah. Like Fuck. the marathon runners that come in right at the finish yeah. line. Yeah. 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 And we, last year, we were like, seriously, we hadn't. We had no case. Like, 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 DGR in Cleveland had successfully managed with like one or two minor traffic infractions, and not lost any bikes. Yeah. And last year we were in the shadow of downtown, and some guy's bike decided to eat a car. Like his Triumph decided to straight up eat a car, and the car was just like, "I'm gonna turn here." And the Triumph was like, "No, I'm gonna turn here first. And that guy tried to kill a car with his motorcycle and we got him taken care of like he went to the hospital and his bike made it to the shop and we were it'll it slowed us down by like at least 36 minutes <laughs> yeah so that's the thing i was able oh. to squeeze in a little snacker from kentucky pride but yes exactly <laughs> okay and for people that were paying attention we did raffle off a motorcycle the owner of the motorcycle in Australia, mm -hmm. has decided to put the motorcycle up for sale on eBay because he has agreed with us that it is impossible to ship that fucker into mo into Australia. Australia. Yeah, we, we checked. He checked. We all tried. Nobody can do it. But what he's decided is that he's going to put that bike up on eBay. No fucking reserve. Ooh. Oh! Challenge accepted. So there is going to be a 2015 wow. Moto Guzzi V7 that we know is battle proven because <laughs> what it didn't prove at vintage or at uh, DGR last year proved at vintage days. Um, it produces fire. It's it unburnable. No miles on it. It's virtually it. unburnable. <laughs> it's yeah. virtually yeah. flame proof. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's not like this thing has any. It armor. has a full factory warranty. Yeah. It has never it's been never titled. Been you're getting, you'll be the first person ever to have a title on the Moto Guzzi V7 Special Scrambler Cleveland Moto Edition. Uh, it's going up on eBay tomorrow. And what is the date tomorrow? Just so they the 11th. Well, we're dropping this in about 12 minutes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so tomorrow. So it's going up on eBay tomorrow. August 11th. Yep. How many so, day auction? We'll do seven. We'll do a seven day auction. If you're already doing it, we'll do ten. Let's do ten day auction. That's a good start. For, uh, Saturday's a great day. Anyway. So here's the thing. Yeah. It's no reserve. We're doing it no reserve. So fuck it. That bike is gone. It's yeah. gone. Yeah. So here's the thing. Like we know how many raffle tickets we sold. It was just shy, just shy of the number we wanted to. It's fine. We had a good time. Everybody was there. Um, he's decided that he's going to take uh, whatever eBay, I'm sorry, you fucking heartless bastards, say the bike is worth. So <clears> if you want to own it, bid. And who knows? But he's going to take whatever the high bid is. It's going to sell. Do you have to do that under your account or his account? I'm going to do it under my account because I'm here. Yeah. At the end of the day, the dude spent 20 bucks. So if he gets I know he 50, bought one yeah. ticket. Like, really, he's a like, podcast yeah. listener and yeah. he bought one fucking ticket. By the way, I love everything about that. Yeah. So Oscar's like, fuck him and his hat. <laughs> Me too! <laughs> Oscar's like, I worked harder than anyone else in the room to buy that shit. Oscar's like, if there was any justice in the world, that would be my bike, and fuck you, I wouldn't be riding a CT-110. No, it's amazing that he actually got no, it. Wait, you did on it. How many tickets did you buy? A lot. Don't tell him Some. the answer. He I bought, bought a lot. lot too, though. Some. You beat me? All right. He bought. He oh, beat you. Uh, the only person that... W 
Wayne. Wayne. Wayne has made some irresponsible financial decisions. <laughs> no. Yes. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. <laughs> Wayne has made some irresponsible decisions regarding raffle tickets. And, uh, and, and he tried this time. But the dude from Australia with one fucking ticket. ticket. And he only bought the ticket to support the podcast. Which, by That's the way... the coolest thing is, ever. Yeah. Thank you, Dustin. You're right. That is the coolest thing ever. The fact that he just wanted to be like a part of the thing and, and do it. So we're rocking it for you. Uh, and he's uh, the bike's going to go up tomorrow. I got it out of the warehouse. We're going to clean it up because it's got Mid-Ohio all over it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's legit. Yeah, it does. Well, no, the back tire's not burnt. The back tire never stopped moving. No, it was just a pie uh, plate that caught the on pie fire. pie plate. Yeah. The, 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 and the, my foot and somebody else's foot and your leg. <laughs> and, and, the and the board. And the microphone the at board. one point was on fire. There's a lot of fire at that point. There's definitely... One, I'm glad we were the first people to do that. Yeah. <laughs> because now they all have to give us credit when they talk about it. Right, right. But the... Uh, that was good. Yeah, like, was if fun. you want to talk about like good moments, it was good. Yeah. However, next time, pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do a flaming <laughs> shave job. Not track pants, because those fuckers will shrink wrap right to your yeah, legs. No, 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 no. Next yeah. time is proper yeah. pants. Yeah. Like nothing that isn't from a military somewhere. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> all I can say Duluth is Trading I was. Company. Yeah. So I was. I was super duper, super duper, super duper. Lubricated when we decided to do that? No. Yeah. <laughs> and the next day, after I dealing with like two blown out bus tires and the whole deal, I was kind of like, why do my fucking legs hurt so much? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is with my legs hurting so Who much? Who shoe pranked me and shaved my legs <laughs> last night? <laughs> 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 and then I was like, oh yeah, I was on fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole fire thing. Oh, yeah. That whole fire thing, it slipped my memory. <laughs> fuck. All right. Well, we got to remember that for next year. So as of tomorrow, you'll be able to bid on a, a, a you know, a, a properly like baptism by fire. I mean, it's really only been ridden two days. <laughs> yeah. 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 Honestly, by an old lady. A, that's not. A, that's right. not a false statement. It has been ridden two days, but those two days. Speaking of tomorrow, right. anybody going to the Rockabilly Ruckus? Anybody? Mm -hmm. anybody? No. Where's this? Uh, fairgrounds. It's a uh, vintage flat track car Kevin racing. Moore Kevin, Kevin Moore, Moore, yeah. They, which fairgrounds? Talmadge. Talmadge Fairgrounds. Or Talmadge. Something like that. Fairgrounds. Wow. Kevin does that every year. I know he does that every year, but we're open on Saturday, so. Oh, this is gonna I don't be good. Get to have any it's fun the whole weekend, dude. It's the whole is it really? Week. Oh yeah, it's gonna be. Let's see about that. Hold on, I'll give you the details because it's tomorrow. It's the Rockabilly Ruckus. And it's at uh, Trumbull County Fairgrounds. Trumbull, so, Trumbull, yeah. Trumbull, Trumbull. But they have legitimate rockabilly bands. Like, not like, you know, Bob Schmedley and the, the Stickmeisters. It's like legitimate bands. <laughs> 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 I like the Stickmeisters. <laughs> 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 look, at, look, at, if fucking Dale Watson doesn't show up, I'm right. going to be let down. Right. And now, now that you've said that. Right. Yeah. But look, at, like, you got the old school Google flat Dale track. Watson. Come on, man. That looks fun. I'm, That's I'm a good you. time. Yeah. There will cool. be some motherfuckers that know Hot Rod Link in there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There'll be some dude drifting a bus sideways. Yeah, that's it. So hey, cool if, if you're listening to this tonight, right. tonight, 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 and that's so tomorrow, driving. Saturday, and Sunday, you got two days left of this. This you is happening. the Trumbull County Fairgrounds. Yeah, it's we'll gonna be, sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. But there's gonna be motorcycles too. They're they're open to anything uh, pre seventy nine. And they're open. The, the track's open from one to five to do whatever you want to do on it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait, I'm sorry. The track is open from one to five p.m. Yeah. tomorrow. You just have to sign your balls away, saying if you kill yourself, you're not holding me responsible. You can go and ride the track. Yeah. You did that on Dr. Pepper. Yeah. This yeah. is dirt. Yeah. Well, my my mo or my uh, mini bike's not pre seventy nine. Yes, it is. Mm. Oh, maybe I did. Have well, you I... seen the title? Oh, yeah, no. Uh, neither has that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good point. I assure you, they had that Paint technology. Paint it flat black by the morning, you begin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had that technology in the seventies. Yeah, yeah. We were I've thinking about going camping this weekend. That's right beside Mosquito Lake. Campground. It is Mosquito Lake. Yeah. Mosquito. Do you know why they? I'm named heading there tomorrow. Do you know that, why yeah. they named Mosquito Lake Mosquito Lake? Oh. Keep people away. Yeah, it's like Iceland. Time. It was like Iceland. Nobody wants to go there. Quite nice. You can go Mosquito there for ninety nine bucks though from Cleveland. Oh, yeah, now. No shit. Mosquito Lake. Who would go to Mosquito Lake? Like seriously, 
what the fuck? I'm not gonna. Malaria Pond was closed. We went to <laughs> yeah, there but Mosquito Lake boats. is fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, you can rent boats there and stuff. There by yeah. shit town. Unlimited horsepower yeah. boating, the best fishing in. It's in Ohio. unlimited host, horsepower boating, and you can rent a pontoon boat for the cost of a case of beer. Really? really? And they won't even tell you you can't take your case of beer on the pontoon boat. Wow. I know it's funny. Yeah, it's weird. You're allowed to drink on a boat in Ohio. No. You aren't allowed not to drive. Hold uh, on, yeah. you're not allowed to drive a boat in the state of Ohio. You can be on that motherfucker as much as you want. It could be a raging party, right? Exactly. But you're driver. not allowed to drive it, right? Exactly. That damn Actually, driver. I think, I think no, it's the guy same. swimming. No, you can't drive. have alcohol in your system too. It's like point oh eight, the same it's as point oh eight. Yeah, point oh eight. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. same rule. But yeah, that's one of those things. Is like you know, well, well, who's. Is there an age boat? limit for boats? Like, can I take my four-year-old daughter and have her be the designated boat? Well, well, the cool thing about <laughs> you know like us is you we don't have can. to, we yeah, don't have to do the uh, watercraft licensing. Cause if have you born... ever tried to do roadside stability tests oh. on the water? Because <laughs> <laughs> unless your name is... Unless your name ends with of Nazareth, you're probably going to fail. <laughs> Steve of Nazareth. Of Nazareth. Let, let me see you swim a straight line. <laughs> you're like... Doggy paddling to the side. <laughs> so you don't need a boating license either because you're old enough. Right, yeah. exactly. You're if I try to touch my toe, if I try to touch my nose, I'll like drown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way that works. Oh, shit. Is this a motorcycle podcast? Sure. Yeah, Something like that. Oh, man. All right, uh, on that, anybody have anything else? Nope. John? Very briefly. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of you may or may not have heard that in Saudi Arabia, women are not allowed to drive. And one of the other things that they're now allowed to do is ride motorcycles. Get the fuck out of here. So as we speak. Really? Women in Saudi Arabia. Are finally. Finally able to ride. Allowed to ride motorcycles. Yep. The burger's getting caught in the rear tire. Oh! And they have, uh, you know, they have riding courses, which are like $400 an hour. I, I found it when we were researching the Harley and electric yeah, and everything. Yeah. And yeah. These well, women, women in were Saudi gonna... Arabia are now allowed, finally fucking allowed to operate motorcycles. They still and drive some, cars. They still have to have a... Dealer. So I um, probably have to have <laughs> a, a man buy, help them buy it and stuff like that. Yeah, and, or whatever. Hello, they, but, but then they were also <laughs> talking that, you know, the whole thing, that there's actually a lot of enthusiasm for getting women riding that, well, especially younger people are like, yeah, it's cool. I want my girlfriend to be able to ride a yeah. bike. And, I mean, I, I'm so, at this, at this point, I'm so fucked up. I mean, I just assume that, like, some of the best riders in the world are lady riders. Yeah. Like, I, I don't see a gender. I don't see why there yeah. needs to be a powder puff class mm-hmm. in any form of motorsport. Ladies are... You know, and term, or more capable you, you know the, ter- the term lady driver or women right. driver, you know what I mean? Right. I've been fucked over by men with just as much yes, as not more exactly. as by women, you know? Right. I, mean? I don't think there should be a powder puff class in most of anything. No. Uh, I think that, that it should be that way. And, well, here's the fucking Saudi Arabia or the women that fought hard to get that. But they were talking about trying to work out obstacles. You mentioned the burqa and everything about... Yeah. You know, what are you going to ride on a motorcycle? Hammer pants, motherfucker. Hammer pants. Right. It looks like a burka. It's hammer <laughs> pants. Like, just put a little fucking elastic at the bottom of each leg. Hammer pants. And like they have the, the smoke shields. Right now they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally yeah. Like that shit. Does the hood go over or under the helmet? No, oh, no. You just take the fucking hood off and slide the helmet on. Uh, it's what? like a baklava. Yeah. Just have a right. <laughs> what did we say? Das- and like, Bella Clava. Yeah. Right. Bella Clava. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. They the might think you're some fucking, they might think you're DJs. Okay. It's a hood or a Greek yeah. Dude, you wear a full face helmet? Yeah. It counts. It counts? Fuck yeah. I love that. That's that's badass. Well, hey, you just added a percentage to the motorcycle community of the, the world, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And and that, like... 168 units. Harley <laughs> 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 the Davidson's like, how cheap is labor in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, right? <laughs> Can we pretend like we're going there to sell bikes? Well, they were talking yeah. about it. It was a landmark for Harley Davidson because these... Women were learning to ride Harley Davidsons oh, and stuff God. like that. And it was like, were they really? And, and, yeah, yeah, so they were, they were taking them to a closed course, which was a, a race car track. Yeah. And that's where they were taking their, right. for $400, they were getting, a, you know, closed course lessons on, you know, everything you would do on yeah. a motorcycle right. braking. Hey, motorcycle it, safety foundation type the, thing. The first 883 pink bikes that they've ever brought out. Leftover and, Buells. Yeah. I don't think they'd, <laughs> they'd probably be black. Oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah, yeah. Get away with it's it. Saudi Arabia is a very weird place. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I yeah. believe you've seen people that have you know. But there's money. Bikinis in the 80th floor. There, right? There's Jeez, money. We though. just lost there's the money. five guys that pirated our podcast. Well, over and, yeah, they pirated our podcast <laughs> <over there. laughs> on their stolen iPhones. Right. Yeah, that's it. While driving their uh, Volkswagen diesels. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. The, uh, but yeah, I I do feel like. 
when you think about that that part of the world that there's still like that ladies don't have the same rights or are any way encumbered at all, uh, that that kind of still pisses me off. Yeah. Because I am a power bottom in my relationship, and uh, <laughs> I don't. Doctor Waters has earned everything she's gotten, right. and the fact that she did it backwards attached to me is significant. Yeah. Like, you know, Ginger Rogers did everything that Fred Astaire did backwards in high heels. And that's pretty solid. And when I think about that, and I think about my own wife and the people that I've known and the people that work here, um, yeah, the, the women in my life all work their fucking balls off. Their ovaries and, off. Well, hence again, balls are balls, man. You, you should know? be remain gender neutral. I, I, your words are affecting my auditory receptors. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I'm not PC, but I, I mean, like, I do say that we, I mean, everybody should ride. I love to ride. I want everyone to ride. Well, respect is respect. There's yeah. no political correctness when it comes to respect. You respect right. somebody for their actions, not for their yeah. gender or anything else. Yeah, so, why, is that, yeah. why does the gender got anything to do with it? Right. But here's to that. And I know Eliza worked really hard with the Chikistan crew, and they did, they, they rocked Pakistan. Um, and, that's a that's a good thing, and we should try to share what we do with everybody we can fucking share it with, unless they're cock knockers and fuck those guys. We don't want them around anyway. Right? Some asshole. I don't want to hear about you. But uh, yeah, unless you got something else, man, ride fast and take chances. Uh, play us out, John. Bum, bum, bum.